And we are back with the Purple Pants Podcast Survivor News Edition. Y'all thought we was just going to do Xander. Then you thought we was just about to do Shan. But listen, we had to bring some pro athlete energy in the building. Of course, you know, I got my bros with me. The Wendell that is pouring wine glass in that fancy just show off that you won a million dollars. Oh, uh -huh. but it's the Purple Pants Podcast Cup for me, though. Yes, and yes. we've got the baby boy that is Jack Ackie. What's oh, up, guys? How rocking, we doing? Rocking some more Purple Pants podcast gear. Oh, we yeah. appreciate it. But listen, enough, enough about y'all. You guys have been loving the post Survivor 41 energy. And so why stop at two when we can have three? I'd like to formally welcome to the podcast, the man, the myth, the legend, the uncle on the grill. Okay. It's Danny. <laughs> welcome to the Purple Pants podcast. Thank y'all for having me, family. Thank y'all for having me. It's great to be here. I'm sure we got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Respect the team, Danny Merch, and the, the, the Purple Fans Podcast Merch. I will be copying me some just, just, just to show the love back, man. So, so appreciate all three of y'all. We appreciate you, Danny. It is. I'm, I'm glad that you're here because, you know, I've been holding it down for Jack and Wendell being the only pro athlete. So I am happy <laughs> that I got another pro athlete with me. What sport you play, Bryce? Talking ish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought uh, I don't use beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens. That ha real ones know that ish talking is definitely a, a big a big part of sports. Absolutely. MVP. And uh, Danny, we we don't want to just talk Survivor with you, man, because we know you're a very dynamic individual. And fortunately, this season we we're able on the show to see the different um, just the different aspects of who you are and what makes you you. So first and foremost, I want to start out by saying, I'm sorry about those cowboys. <laughs> hey, uh, look, it's all right. good. Oh, it's all right. It's, all right. it's okay. You know, we'll, we'll, I'm upset too. I'm not really over it, you know, but maybe, maybe next year, maybe we make some changes. I don't want to get myself in trouble because I do still have a podcast with the cowboys, but hopefully we make some changes. We're able to regroup. Uh, figure out what we did wrong and make a Super Bowl run, man. We got to get one before Jerry's gone. Yeah, you guys got a lot of young talent on the on the squad. Trayvon Diggs, it's a great great team. Michael Parsons, and you, you just mentioned your podcast, and that's with Barry Church, right? And I, I'm a yeah. Jaguars fan, so shout out to him. <laughs> he helped carry us to that AFC Championship. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the podcast that you, that you have with him? Yeah, so me, um, Barry Church, and then a guy named Newey Scruggs. He does NBC News out out here in Dallas. Um, they were just looking for for something different. Uh, we have maybe five or six podcasts, but they wanted something different from the players to where you don't just talk about football. You can talk about pop culture, maybe best Eddie Murphy movies, maybe best Craig Rock movies. Uh, so the stuff that we talk about in the locker room. So me and Barry uh, actually went, came into the league together, both undrafted free agents. So we naturally just created a bond, had a friendship back since 2010. And he had just retired. So I reached out to him. Hey, man, you want to you want to get on a, a on the show? Um, and, and they put it together and it's been rolling for three years now. So three years we've been rolling, wow. kicking awesome. it, uh, gi giving the fans some just a little, a little something different to talk about. Longer than us. Oh, now yeah, what is your, <laughs> what is your favorite Eddie Murphy movie since oh, you life easy? Oh, oh, oh. Life easy. It's, it's one of the most quote. It's like Friday and life. Those are two of the most quotable movies that I've seen, like uh -huh. going through everyday life, I can always quote something from life or quote something from Friday. But is you going to eat your cornbread? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but what I want to know, Danny, is, and you know, I, I, I'm asking for myself, but how active are you still in like the pro football community? Uh, yes. Yeah, so and, and can you plug? You got numbers that you could like maybe just, oh you know what I mean? <laughs> Nah, so we, we so we had this thing called the uh, so the NFLPA still takes care of all the former athletes. So once you're in and you pay your union dues for a certain amount of years, you're automatically in the club for the rest of your life. Uh, so with me working for the Cowboys, running uh, the youth football program, I have a lot of uh, NFL like former NFL players that actually help me coach at these camps. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm very well intertwined and connected within the, the former uh, player league and the current player league. You know, because I actually work for the club now that's what's up man that's it's good good to stay dialed dialed in and everything um 
we Stick know that another know. was that? Stick with what you know. That's real. <laughs> and another thing that is clear that you know is cooking, right? <laughs> so I we want to know how you um like how you got into cooking and wh- where this passion came from, what your favorite thing is to cook, et cetera, et cetera. Tell us about cooking. Yeah, so kind of the same way I got into Survivor. Uh, once I retired, um, I found myself with a lot of time on my hands trying to figure out, you know, what to do, how to kind of get people to come over and hang out and kind of create that locker room experience. So like Saturdays and Sundays, I was going to the store. I was getting whatever oxtail they had, oh. whatever pork rib they had, oh. trying to figure out how to make make the best thing. So over that six years since I've been out of the league, I just been experimenting with stuff, trying to figure out how to get it done. And the wife is like, "Man, you may as well put that on on Instagram and, and, and show the people, you know, yeah. what you can do. It might <laughs> might might make something happen." So I'm like, "All right." So every time I'm cooking, she's recording, and it can get frustrating sometimes. But <laughs> but, but I think it turned out pretty good though. Can I just ask real quick though, who is responsible for the holiday photos and the matching gear? Okay, because <laughs> I, I peeps it, I see it. Good question. Look. I, listen, I didn't get Instagram until 2020. So I wasn't even, I was not even a social media guy. I really, really not into pictures like that. So none of that is me. None of that is me. Like if you see me post like something at the gym, that's me. Other than that, all the wife, all the family pictures, all the Christmas decorations, all that stuff that you see on my Instagram is literally led by the amazing Kiki McCray. So shout out to her because it actually creates Really good memories. Yeah, shout out shout to her. Out, shout out to Kiki. Uh, but let's get into the, as Bryce would say, the meat and potatoes. <laughs> you mentioned with your cooking experience, that's something that kind of came after you retired, and and you compare that to sort of your Survivor experience. Can you tell us a little bit about not only like when did you start watching Survivor, but what was your like application process like? What made you want to apply to the show? What led to you getting out onto the island? Yeah, so so uh, 20, 2015 uh, was my final season. So twenty sixteen, I'm like, man. What can I do to stay busy? Because that first three or four months was literally like just hanging out, drinking, twiddling my thumbs, trying to wait, wait for my friends to get off work because they all work nine to five. And then I have nothing to do. My wife's at work. So I'm like, what can I do? So I actually applied to get into business school, got into that. So I started doing that during the day. I mean, during the night. And I was like, well, I still got early in the morning until school starts to figure out something to do. So I'm like, let me get on this streaming service and figure out what what interests me. And I see Survivor. I'm like, I remember this from 2000 when I was watching Stone Cold Steve Austin and, and The Rock on wrestling. And I chose that instead of Survivor. So let me check this out now. Turned it on and I could not turn it off. It was it was just super entertaining just to just to see how similar it was to an actual locker room and the beefs that you have and the and the situations that you have that are how crystal situations when stuff doesn't work, stuff goes good, how people react. And it was it just kind of took me in, in that in, in that mode. So I was like watching it with my wife, and I look over. I'm like, man, I could do that. I could do that. I can do that challenge. I think I can do this. And I asked her if I could go. She was like, hell nah. <laughs> we, we weren't we weren't married at the time. Okay. And she was like, nah. You think you about to leave me for however much time? Nah, we ain't, we ain't doing that. Literally, soon as we got married, she was like, so you want to go Survivor? <laughs> Peace. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> She she uh she made the tape for me. Actually, she went to the store because I didn't believe her. So she went to the store. I, I sat in my room. I made my own video quick, rushed it. It was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> I didn't hear anything for a couple of days. And I was like, man, I got to I got to get her involved. So she set me down. She helped me make another video. Within a the day, they called me. Uh, I was doing kind of <laughs> I was doing kind of uh, meeting with Jeff on Zoom to see if it was if I was a guy to be like. Uh, they flew me out to L.A. We went through that whole process. Uh, they told me I was on the show. COVID hit, so I had a year break to get in, in better shape, wow. and then we ended up uh, going on the show in 2021. Yeah, so with awesome. with COVID and everything happening, how did you prepare for Survivor? Did you just like watch a bunch of seasons, or did you sleep outside? Was Kiki just <laughs> making you rice? Like, what were you doing? No, listen, Survivor was at the back of my mind because before I went on. Kiki was not pregnant with my beautiful daughter at this point, but we found out she was pregnant in February. I was supposed to leave in March. So then when I found out that I wasn't going, it was like, this is actually great because it's a pandemic. My wife can't go to the store. She really can't go anywhere because she's pregnant. So I was able to stay there with her for the entire process. So Survivor was the last thing on my mind. But once they called and told me it was back on, yeah, it was 
it was back to running miles, back to just eating oatmeal in the morning and seeing how my attitude and my body reacted to that. And just literally a three month process of, of trying to get ready for the game. So did you get like you prepared physically, but did you think like, OK, socially, how will I interact with these all walks of life of people? Did that come into play at all? Or you was just like, let me just run these miles and get my <laughs> physique together. No, like I, I, I really compared Survivor to the to an NFL locker room, oh, high school oh. locker room, like literally the same type of attitude. So you got to say. You got guys that are making 50, 60 million dollars who are in the locker room. You got guys who are making two hundred thousand dollars in the locker room, guys who are 10 year veterans, guys who are rookies, all these guys trying to mesh to accomplish one goal. Right. And throughout the process, if you're on a losing team, then you got to deal with guys attitudes, feeling like they're not getting enough playing time, feeling like they're getting cheated by a coach. If you're on a winning team, then you got to figure out how to deal with success and you see how people react to those situations so i was i was really just depending on my my experience in locker rooms now can i ask uh do you actually have like the address to the <laughs> locker room <laughs> or which, 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 <laughs> i just which, i'm asking which locker, which locker room are you trying to get into i'm room? you know listen I, <laughs> listen i take the cowboys i i listen i <laughs> i just want just typing in my gps just to see let, 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 let me give you a hint. Okay, this is what you do. Okay. As soon as your favorite team okay. is out of the season or out okay. of the playoffs, okay. you, you hit the Las Vegas. Oh. All right. Because that's 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 where the trips uh, always go. Oh. Over, everybody's heading to Vegas as a team so you can get that last moment because teams are never the same uh, the year after. So wow. everybody's trying to make sure that they get to spend that last time with yeah. their with guys that have been with that whole season. Now, can I hit up Kiki for the credit card information to book the flight? Or uh... <laughs> she, hey, she might give it to you. She might give it to you. I'm gonna right. block. I'm gonna block all of them. <laughs> oh man! So uh, back to back to the game, the Survivor game. Uh, what was your thought process behind not sharing that you uh, were an NFL player? Why, like, why did you decide not to share that? And how do you think that that did for you in the game? Yeah, I, well, I mean, binge watching seasons and seeing some of the former athletes that have been on the show, you just see that for some crazy reason, people just decide to say that this person doesn't deserve to win money. So they start to get targeted, which I think is totally crazy. Like, how can you tell somebody who is playing the same game you are that they don't deserve it once they get to the end for outplaying you? Right. One, you don't know this person's personal finances. You don't know how many family members they taken care of. So I always thought that was super shallow, but I knew that if, it, if I did bring it out, it, it, would, it would probably cause me some trouble. So I think it worked out for me. Uh, if I would have made it to the end, it would have been a bomb. I would have been able to drop just to kind of explain it the way I kind of explained it to y'all. Yeah. Um, because to assume that just because somebody made some money, you know, previously when they were 26 years old, now 33, you have no idea what, what has gone on in that person's life in the last 10 years. Absolutely. And also it, it should, what, what you have shouldn't matter. It's like, yo, how did you play the game? How did right. you get to the end? That mm -hmm. should be what they base it on, not like how much money you have. Absolutely. It's, it, it, it's a game, man. We went out there. You go out there to compete against somebody to show that you play better than them. How much you have, what you have, what you don't have should not matter at the end of the day. Did this person play a game that you can vote for? Yeah, I think we talked about it all season. It, it was definitely a, a good choice, I feel like, and you were able to cover it up pretty well. And, and you, you said you were a former college athlete, right, too. So you, you weren't hiding. You were hiding just a little bit of the truth, not that whole truth, which I think makes it a lot easier. Uh, and you mentioned, you touched on how, you know, the tribe dynamic on Survivor is a little bit like being in that professional locker room setting or really any locker room setting where you're meshing with the people from all walks of life, all different ages, uh, race, whatever. Uh, are there? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? And I'm also curious: is are there other ways where being in the NFL you think translated to help your game out on the island? Yeah. So, so if you look at at our original tribe, the Luvu tribe, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing we do is forget to unclip the uh, the boat, right? Yep. Naturally, when something like that happens, right, in a game like Survivor, what is everybody doing? They're looking for someone to blame, right? But when you've been in these situations and you understand mm. the moment and, and what you have coming up, then you can kind of work to calm people down and let them know it's not it's not as big as you think it is. We still have another opportunity so people don't have to start going crazy. So me being a person that people could lean on and be like, hey, man, it ain't that big of a deal, man. Don't worry about it. We've been in this before. We'll come out and we'll win the rest. And them having that trust and belief in me 
allowed us to perform better in the challenges uh, after that. Um, and as far as like being able to mesh and mingle with, with people, when you're in the locker room, the way that you connect with these guys. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> listening. <Bryce is> <laughs> I'm yeah. listening. It's a different type of connection, nah, guys. The, the, the way that you connect with people is you get to know them on a personal level. Like if you're going out there, blood, sweat, and tears with a guy, if you know what he's playing for, why he's out there, then that'll make you play for them even harder, right? So getting to know someone, knowing what questions to ask to get them to, to tell you that information so y'all can feel like y'all bonded on a certain certain topic or certain subject, I think that's what I was able to use to to kind of get some inroads in with some people that you may not have expected me to be cool with. And I think I love this comparison between Survivor and football. Like, how would you compare the toll on your body from playing football as to being out on Survivor? Uh, that, I, I would say this. That's a difficult one just because I, I, I've i seen what some former NFL players look like 15 and 20 years after Man. the game is over. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't be able to compare it to that type of toll. But as far as like going through a season, Survivor was much, much more difficult just because wow. when we go through training camp, we go through the season, we're eating right, we're getting sleep, we're doing everything we can to perform in our, at, our, at our best. Mm-hmm. And Survivor is the exact opposite. They're taking yeah. everything away from you to see then how you can perform in those type of situations. So when I'm going into the game, I had breakfast, I had lunch, I might have my protein shake, whatever I need to get amped up, I got all that. On Survivor, they strip all that away from you. So it was it was totally different. And, and going through that process was, was was harder. So can I ask, what is in a Danny protein shake? Because Wendell is on this whole protein type shake. And I was over his house the other day and I was like, ooh, let me taste that. And it tastes like trash truck juice. Like, <laughs> you a <are> lie. Like, <laughs> please tell me, Danny, like your protein, like wh- what's the Danny protein shake? Listen, listen, let me tell you something. There, there is no easy way to get into the shake that you want to get. So if you got to drink something nasty and your shake don't taste as good, then you just got to get that done. Mine is simple. Some strawberry flavor, one okay. scoop okay. with some water, shake it up, take it to the head, and I'm out of there. Oh. I'm good. Ooh. See, but that, that doesn't sound like trash truck juice. <laughs> no. What, what are you drinking, Wendell? We'll talk about the brand of your protein once we get off the pod. I'll throw (laughs) some handfuls of kale, some spinach. I'll throw some some protein. Oh, 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 I got you. You you doing the natural? You serious? I do like I do green green juices, and then I'll add some protein. This this pod ain't about me. It's about you, my man. So, (laughs) uh, but my question is, like as as we've seen watching the NFL playoffs, uh, sports can often be won or lost in literal seconds. Uh, but but Survivor's more of a slow burn. Um, even so, I'm trying to think if you can think of a moment that kind of like defined your game or like the moment of of your game this season. Let me see. I, I think um, it, it would have to be a, a culmination of moments, right? I think it was more of me positioning myself uh, in the middle of a lot of different alliances and then also being the person to where they're like, ah, like he's cool. He's easy to work with. He may say something to you. If you push back, he's okay. He's not going to be super pushy. But being able to be, to have Deshaun, Sidney, and Nasir, even though I wanted to get him out, and then getting to the merge and having somebody like Tiffany say, listen, we ain't voting you out. It's going to be Sidney or it's going to be Deshaun. So that means I got Evie. <laughs> and having a relationship with Xander. Then I got Liana and I got Shan. Like there's, there's nobody that is looking for me to be the person that they voted out, even though they see me perform amazing. I, 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 not the, huh? I perform good <laughs> in the team challenges. Like it was, we were just so cool and they, and they felt a certain way about me to where they weren't trying to vote me out. Like you would see in, in past seasons of survivor. So not one moment, but those moments to where I was able to connect with all those players to where I wasn't on, on their radar at all. Very nice. I like that. And I like with such a diverse cast, I'm curious to know your thoughts on like, did you know anything about the survivor diversity initiative that was going on? And what was your thoughts being as though like you binge watched a lot of seasons and you coming out on the island, seeing such a diverse cast? Yeah. So I I did not know about the initiative um, just because I hadn't been a survivor player who watched the podcast, watched the Ponderosas. Like as I was watching it, I'm literally going through the seasons back to back. Right. I don't even know any of this stuff exists. 
So I didn't know anything about the diversity of it. I did recognize as I was watching it that it's, it's not that many black people playing the game, which is why when I told my people that I was on it, they're like, what you going on, Nick and the Parade? Yeah, <laughs> been there. <laughs> it's not the show. It's not the show, man. Let's get this thing turned around. So, you know, I had a lot of family members watching it, but um, I just, I, I, I didn't know anything about it, which is unfortunate. But when I got out there during pregame and I saw it, I was like, I think we have more black people on the show than, than I thought, because I thought Nasir was black at the time, because he had a hat on, he was walking around, had the dark skin. I'm like, all right, I think you got like seven. <laughs> we, What's up, Al? <laughs> we, might, we might be okay. So I, I was happy to see it. But, but weirdly enough, when I told my wife uh, how many black people were on the show, she was like, don't go out there and form no All Black Alliance. <laughs> I was like, why not? She's like, I'm just telling you, man, that type of stuff get messy. Just go out there and play the game. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I can, but that, that's always going to be in the back of your mind anyways. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and hitting the beach, your tribe especially was, was very diverse. You had Erica, you, Deshaun, Nasir, Sydney, Heather. When you first got out there, what was sort of your mindset with that tribe uh, in particular? I don't know if you had any strategies coming in and how that might have changed when you saw the people that, that were around that you were going to be working with. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was really just have small conversations with whoever I could to see how close I could get with them, but it worked out for me just because me and Deshaun were sitting at the back of that boat that didn't get unclipped. So when we had the opportunity to do the sweat challenge, it was a no brainer. It was, mm -hmm. I literally said, Hey man, I think it's me and Deshaun fault. So it's only right that if it was only right that us to kind of carry this load to get us the machete in the, in the yeah. pot. Right. So as we're walking and connecting four hours is a long time. Yeah. Right. And it's the same thing in football. Blood, sweat, and tears. You bond the most when you're able to push each other to continue to work toward completing a task. And me and Deshaun did that, and we were able to keep that up through the entire game. Yeah, y'all had an instant bond, and, and it really carried you, like you said, through the whole game. It was, it was really impressive. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I and I gotta say this, because it's, it's just been said so many times everywhere, me and Deshaun did not connect like that because we were two black men. <laughs> Me and Deshaun connected like that because we were able to connect on maybe him playing football. He played football back in high school. And then I was able to push him through a tough moment where he figured that he wanted to quit, right? So when you have somebody who, who can get you to go that extra mile, that is an automatic bond. Deshaun being yeah. black definitely helped. That is <laughs> not what started me and Deshaun's thing. We, we just didn't want to move through the game like that. So I, I, I know it's going a lot of ways, but I, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. We appreciate you letting us know, man. And like, drop those gems, man. Let us like, we're here to, to listen. You know what I'm saying? This is your show right now. So um, my question, your tribe, Levu, you guys were very dominant, like almost too dominant to where you almost couldn't throw a challenge. <laughs> Can you please like explain what was going on? Like y'all were so good. I guess the other tribes were so not so good. Can you tell us about that challenge? No, man, we, we, we had a chink in the armor, man. We had a chink <laughs> in the armor. Okay, the, Deshaun comes to me. He's starting to see that all the men are getting voted out. He's like, listen, I'm telling you, it's, it's a woman's alliance going on. We're going to be outnumbered if we get to the merge. I'm like, oh, bro, you tripping. You tripping. He just keeps pushing it. I'm like, all right, man, you cool. If, you know, in this type of relationship, you got to give a little, take a little. So I'm like, all right, if you want to do it, then that's fine. All right. He's like, I'm going to let you know at the challenge if i give you the jump man sign oh then we're throwing it right so at this time it's just it's just me and him so sydney's sitting out we don't trust nasir and we think erica is, is sneaky at this point because at that time i thought she was trying to get rid of sydney which was <laughs> what she wasn't so he tells us <laughs> at the last minute we cannot include nasir uh because we don't trust him so it's just me and him trying to get this thing get this thing right and we had it though, all right? As much as Deshaun wanted to throw that challenge and it was his plan, I'm putting it on him, he messed it up. We get all the way to that ring toss. TV didn't show it. That ring toss, we were up there for like five minutes. Deshaun gets up there, he throws the ring off the platform. Like, <laughs> off. He off the platform. He you sure he wasn't ring. trying? Oh, he, oh man. I get up there, I throw it like four times, not hitting. Erica gets up there, she misses, Nasir goes. And then Deshaun goes again, and that's where they show it from. So Deshaun's going again, and then Nasir's like, okay, I got it. He's throwing it, and he keeps trying to throw it to the middle. And I'm like, yes, okay, JD's going to hit it eventually. And money. Deshaun, he, he <laughs> so just, we think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, money. But he loses <laughs> and he's like, 
Deshaun, he's like, Nasir, throw it to the one on the left. And I'm looking at him like, bro, why would you tell him that? Let him keep trying to bang the one in, in the middle. And of course, as soon as he throws to the left, uh, it's over. Yeah. So everything just 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 went the wrong way for us in that challenge. But we tried. It just, just didn't work out. Went the wrong way, but the right way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good complaint to have on Survivor. You can't even throw a challenge. Now well, I'm hey, listen, but if we would have got rid of Erica, we would have been okay then. Now yeah. I'm glad that you said that, Danny, because I'm all about transparency and I'm all about saying something to somebody's face. Now, when I'm watching it, I'm like, why are they not bringing Erica in? Like, what, like, are we not seeing something? And I'm I'm texting, I'm cussing, like, what is Danny doing? What is Deshaun doing? I'm confused. So please let me know, like, what was it about Erica? Like, did you literally see her as such a huge threat? Or was she just not, did she not, was she, was she not in the locker room? And to piggyback on that, <laughs> and to piggyback on that, no, I feel like I feel like we saw a lot of content of Danny, like early foreshadowing, like, oh, we got to look out for Erica, Erica Sneaky, like, that's that that content that like we look down the line and we're like, oh, Erica's the winner. Oh, Danny was talking about her being sneaky. Yeah, but it, see, but it was it wasn't that, and I didn't find out until after the show that that this happened because me, Erica, Sydney, and Deshaun were cool. We were like, hey, it's four, we all right because we didn't really feel feel that we could trust Nasir, and then uh, Sydney was beefing with Heather, so we we're like, okay, we got four. We go fishing. Me and Sydney are out there fishing, having a good time, trying to catch some fish. Deshaun and Eric are sitting on the boat. Uh, Deshaun told me that Erica pitched voting out Sydney while they were on the boat. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh man, Erica sneaky as hell. Nah, we can't have that because in my mind, I'm thinking we cool. So we got to figure out a way to get her out now because we can't trust her, right? So I'm, I'm out on Erica at this point. Well, I get back. Uh, home, I'm texting, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I find out that Deshaun actually pitched Sydney to Erica. Erica oh. said no. Deshaun thought that she was going to blow up his game. So he hurried up and came to us to then say, nah, Erica is the one who yeah. pitched Sydney. So when the word you know, about like Erica sneaky thing, this thing started with Deshaun. So nobody knew about Erica being sneaky. Like it literally started at that moment. <laughs> And it just kept being dragged on on into the merge. So she didn't do anything that was sneaky, <laughs> not not at all. She was just playing an under the radar game, like she said she was. And Deshaun was just being a little being a little messy. Got caught, and he had to cover his tracks. Yeah, respect. And now I got just another question because since we on this, so Nasir, we we love Nasir. Nasir is a, a fan favorite. It seemed like Nasir would be like, I'm with you guys. Don't worry about it. Then we, as fans, would see Nasir like, we got to get Danny out. We got to get Danny out. Like, how, what was your thought process on that? Did you feel like, as we saw, it looked like you kept bringing them back into the fold. Was that, like, strategic? Was that locker room? Like, what was that? Nah, so, yeah, listen. <laughs> I, I would say it was locker room in this sense. It was one of those things to where you know the coach doesn't like the player, but you're not gonna go tell the player that the coach feels a way about him, right? You gonna mm -hmm. keep saying, "Oh man, don't worry, man, coach. He just having he just in a bad mood." So with Nasir, it was the first day I found out he's trying to get me and Deshaun voted out because we were looking for idols. And I'm like, I go back to camp. I'm like, listen, if y'all ain't looking for idols, y'all crazy. What like what the hell are y'all here huh. for, right? It's day one. You ain't about to get voted out for this because I'm trying to protect myself at this moment. And Nasir is like, "All right, cool." He comes like maybe two days later. And we're sitting on the beach at nighttime and we have this moment to where he's he's like, hey, my bad, I was playing too fast. I want to lock it in with you. And he starts telling me about his family, you know, like shed tears, like everything is good. I'm like, all right, Nasir's, Nasir's on. The next day, he goes and tells Sydney, yeah, we don't need Danny around here. Like, I can make y'all like, <laughs> so yeah. like, And that's when you've seen it on on on, on the, in the edit to where mm -hmm. Sydney comes back and tells me, I'm like, Man, I gotta get Nasir out of here, but I never tell Nasir this. Nasir thinks that we're cool this entire time, right? I'm even in my interviews like, man, I keep letting Nasir back in. I'm trying to be cool with him, but he just keeps stabbing me in the back. And I gave him a chance after that. When I was really done with Nasir, is when we got to the beach at the merge and Liana told me that Nasir had an idol. And I'm like, man, this dude been in my camp the whole time. We supposed to be cool. And I found out from Liana, <laughs> Dude, you got an idol? Oh, no, you got to go, Blair. Like, it's, it's just every time I gave him another shot, I found I got another reason 
not mm-hmm. to trust them. Now, me and Nasir are great outside of the game. So oh, me and now, Nasir are cool. Now, free FaceTime, but inside the game, I was just like, this dude is just playing super hard, and I just can't trust him. So now I got another question for you. My bad in the order of the questions. <laughs> so Nasir got an idol you don't know. So you just thought they was just up at the mat talking about <laughs> I think broccoli is a tree. Listen, listen, the, 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 Xander did it masterful, masterfully. He went out there, and the first time he said it, I'm in my athlete mode. Right? So we got, we got three teams. We got three teams, all right? Two of these teams are out here saying how tired they are, right? Xander's telling me that he is weak at the moment. He can't think straight. And I'm like, yes, that's all I'm thinking. Yes, we're yeah. about to tear them up, right? So I wasn't thinking about Xander at all. Brad said it. Brad looked like he was withering away. He <laughs> literally like he was withering away. So I'm like, all right, listen, Lugu is about to win all these challenges. Listen to these people telling us <laughs> how tired they are, how bad of a nice they had. So I wasn't thinking of that. When Nasir said it, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> was Nasir able to put that together. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've never heard I've never heard this joke. I've been around a lot of different people. I've never heard it. And it actually fit with what they were saying. So when I got back to camp, I was like, and this will make me feel played even more. I was like, man, Nasir, that was probably one of the funniest jokes I heard. He's like, <laughs> yeah, man, my uncle said that like back in the day. I'm like, I'm still that, still in that when I go home. So like me and Nasir was just built up a lot, but I, I definitely felt played after I found out. That that's what he had to yeah. say, and that, me giving him kudos on his joke. Just, <laughs> Damn! So you had no idea until the merge that he had found it. Wow! No, wow. I, no idea. And me and me and the seer searched for the idol together, like yeah. repeatedly, day in and day out. And you know, he just he didn't tell, which he shouldn't have. But I'm still gonna feel a way about it. Right. So so <laughs> once you hit, once you hit the merge and you did find out about the idol. Did that really change your dynamic with Nasir? Were you very at that point ready to get rid of him, or you were more more wary because of the idol, or what? What was that change in your mindset like? So, so Nasir was walking around on the beach telling everybody that he was going to play the idol. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I'm safe. I'm telling everybody if he's saying he's going to play it, he ain't going to play it. Yeah. Like he's trying to convince y'all yep. to think that he's going to play it. And the, the crazy part about it is, I think they showed Liana saying that she should that she's thinking about taking Nasir's idol. Me and Deshaun had no idea how the advantage actually worked. My mind is like, hey, take Nasir's idol and then vote out Evie. Like, why, why didn't we do this, right? Take take the target where everybody's thinking we're about to vote out Nasir yeah. and then get Evie yeah. out. But then I found out that we're the only two people who had no idea how this advantage worked. So we weren't able to get it out. But I just, and then I also wasn't into like chasing people and trying to vote people out because they had idols because they hadn't played the game yet. Like you're not playing any game. Like when, like finding an idol is not going to get you the dub at the end. So everybody's like, we need to flush an idol. And I'm just like, why? Like right. why not? Like figure out a plan first, and then see if that idol can help you if you have that relationship, and then figure out who you need to vote out. But I was cool with everybody that had an idol. So just Dang just man. worked out that way. Definitely. I'd like to uh, ask a question about another relationship you had on the island. Our girl Sydney. Uh, you, you guys, you guys were close out there. I saw on her Instagram that she is a patriot, but you're a cowboy. So my question is, how does a patriot and a cowboy get so, you know, get along so well? Listen, let, let, let me tell you. So when, so I'm from Houston uh, and we used to have the Houston Oilers. H-Town? The Houston Oilers left Houston and went to Tennessee. I then became a New England Patriots fan. I did not become a Dallas Cowboy fan until the Dallas Cowboys called me and said, hey, man, we want to give you a tryout. Come yeah. here and work out. All right. So I had been watching the Patriots uh, my whole time growing up throughout college until I got to the NFL. So that, that was an easy connection. But I think we connected more on the fact that I had lived in New York for two years. I mean, for uh, six months. And she was in New York and she was living kind of the same lifestyle that I was living. So we were going to the same restaurants, going to the same clubs, kind of hanging out the same places. So we were just talking about the fun times that we had. Right. And we would talk about those all the time. And nobody else knew. Right. Nobody else knew about what club we were going to or or they couldn't catch the inside joke. So we were just able to just keep connecting over that. Very nice. So what was your thought knowing that connection, that New York money connection, okay, that I'm trying to get into? Okay. I was I was doing an internship. I was living out there for free. I, I wasn't paying for no New York living. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. What was your thoughts on like the Sydney vote out? How did you feel being as though y'all had that connection that nobody really knew about? 
Yeah, well, everybody knew about it because Deshaun went and told everybody. Oh. <laughs> or inseparable. Deshaun was being devious d rap <laughs> And, Very and nice. which is like, which is fine. Like the Deshaun was able to play his own game and I was able to play mine. So I didn't take any offense to any of it. It, it would actually come back to me and I would ask him and he'd be like, nah, I didn't say that. I'm like, yes, you did. You told me that I was going slow. You told me me and Sydney are close. But the Sydney vote, it frustrated me because we had, had this conversation about not playing a shot, shot in the dark because it, it just seemed like the odds were, were just not in your favor. And right, and, and we hadn't been to tribal council. Everybody's at this point, Sydney and Deshaun are running around saying they're going to play their shot in the dark. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. Convince Deshaun not to do it, but I didn't convince Sydney not to. So before the vote, they're, they're saying that all of the girls are going to vote for Evie. All of the men are going to vote for Sydney. And I'm like, nah, the number doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for us like that. So how about this? I'm not voting for Sydney. How about all the dudes vote for Evie? All the women vote for Sydney. Hey, Deshaun, play your extra vote. So now we have enough, no matter what. If, if Sydney plays her shot in the dark, we still tie it up, we vote out Evie. What I did not account for was that Nasir will flip. So Nasir flips, and that's why Sydney ends up going home. We had her, we had her locked in and been able to be safe, even if the shot in the dark didn't work. But Nasir was that wild card, which I didn't find out until after the show, so I wasn't mad at him for that. Yeah. But he flipped, and, and, and that's why the numbers didn't go in our favor. Yeah, that vote out was obviously one of the craziest of the season with uh, all the Xander antics and the Liana advantage and everything. So, honestly, good on you for getting through that vote at the end of the day. Like, that that must have been crazy, especially after, you know, the whole hourglass twist. I was on the same page with you where I thought it was kind of weird that, you know, you win the challenge going into the merge and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you through no power of your own. So, uh, you know, surviving that round must have been super stressful. Um but moving back to you and Deshaun as a duo, like you just said, he was sometimes off doing his own thing. Uh, obviously, at the end of the day, you guys were pretty tight. The show especially painted you guys. You guys are super tight. You know, how close was that duo really throughout the game? And what kind of roles did you guys take on? And, and what were sort of the differences in your game? Yeah, so I, I think so. me and Deshaun were really close. And it actually turned into, I don't know how he's going to take it, but it turned into like a little brother, big brother type thing, right? And it was, it was hard because I could not tell him my life experiences and that I played in the league, that I had seen this before, and this is how it looks, so make sure you try to keep it tight. But at the end of the game, he kind of realized that. So it was the big brother, little brother thing of me trying to let him know that his emotions were, were getting kind of out of control. But then it was also like, hey, man, you do your thing, right? Just don't put me in any danger. And yeah. then I can go and play my game, and I'm not going to put you in any danger, right? So if somebody said my name, he was going to take care of it. If somebody said his name, I was going to make sure it was straight. So anytime that him and Shan got into a beef, and Shan's coming to me like, you think I can trust Deshaun? I'm like, Deshaun is cool. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And Desha Deshaun's like, hey, man, I, like, I can't deal with Shan. I'm like, hey, relax, bro. We're good. So when you see them go have these conversations, especially the first one, it's literally them both coming to me. And then I'm like, listen, y'all got to make this work because we too early in the game to start having these type of issues. And they're able to comb it out and get it straight. But my relationship with Deshaun and allowing him to be devious D-Rad was not the same relationship that Shan was willing to to allow him to do. So everything he did mm -hmm. to her seemed sneaky. But mm -hmm. to me, it was normal. And I knew he wasn't gonna put me in any jeopardy. So I was I was fine with it. Mm. So when we talk about the hour glass twist, I heard you and uh, I heard somewhere, you know, you know, the, the trees be <laughs> moving. I heard somewhere along the lines, you let Jeff know what you really thought about it uh what was your strategy about sending erica uh to the island the the ultimate winner as opposed to nasir yeah so two things couldn't trust nasir better to have him with us because we had no idea what was was going to be going on on the island you just assume it may be an idol or something erica's easy because at this point heather's on the other tribe erica's also not going to be safe she comes back with an idol we had all we are already saying, listen, we'll split it between Erica and Heather and we'll be fine. Erica plays an idol, whatever happens. We're safe no matter what. Easy, safe play at the for the first vote of the merge, and we're fine. So I thought it was, I thought we were good. Uh at that point, I'm also safe. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah. I, I have no worries. So me pitching that out there, uh, I knew I was gonna also let Erica know why I sent her to the island when she got back. But as soon as she got to the beach, I told her straight up, we didn't play paper rock scissors. All right, our, our rock, paper, scissors. We didn't we didn't play it. What happened was, you know, X, Y, Z, and this is why we did it. 
hope we can work together in the future. But if you're mad, I get it. So I thought we were good at the, after that. But yeah, that's my what, thought process of like, yeah, if Erica, I could ask, Erica or Hilda can go. What was your explanation to Erica when she got back? Because obviously you didn't tell her that, you know, you, you didn't really trust Nasir or whatever. Can you can you run by like what you told her when she got back exactly? You know, I'll be lying if I told you that, that, that I remember it verbatim, but it was, it was along the lines of, listen, we had to do it because it was more uh, men, I mean, more women in the game than men, and we had to make sure that we kept the men strong. So I guess I did remember it verbatim. Okay. Okay. And what was your initial thought to the, the hourglass twist? My initial thought, uh, or actually, current thoughts, or <laughs> I mean, how to go with probes? How did y'all? How was that interaction? I mean, I mean, if if, if, if you go back through it, um, like once once we find out that it's about to happen, and Erica walks up that thing, is like this is the option that I had. There was no way that I could be mad at Erica because I'm I'm grown enough and mature enough to understand that she didn't have no choice. If right. it was me. I'm smashing hourglass. Just right. Like, why, like, why wouldn't I? I wouldn't risk going home with only half of the people being eligible to be voted out. So that's fine. So the whole try, the whole challenge, I'm just telling Eric, like, don't, like, I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I ain't mad at you. But I'm, I can't be locked in in the game. Um, as soon as we get on the boat to go back, I'm like, I'm like tearing up because I'm, I'm angry. I'm confused. I have no idea, like, what, what really just happened because I was trying to process, like, I have to go compete now. So as I'm on, on the ride back, I'm like, nah, this ain't right. Like this, this ain't the game I came to play. Like this, if this is something that they can, can continue to do, then I'm wasting my damn time out here. So I get back, I pull the production to the side. I say, hey, man, y'all better get somebody to come talk to me because if not, I'm out. I'm just, like, hey, this ain't gonna fly. Um, so they're like, listen, you want it now? Whatever. I'm like, hey, listen, I don't care when they come, <laughs> but you know, if we don't get something figured out. I'm 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 out, bro. Because this 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 is not the type of game that I want to play. Yeah. Um. So we go through the whole process, and then as I'm talking to them and they're talking through it, I'm just like, listen, I feel trapped at this point because if I quit, then I look like the quitter. If I keep going, then I'm I, I'm literally signed up to allow you guys to do whatever you guys want to me, and I have to be okay with it, right? And I wasn't in a bad a bad spot. I knew I wasn't going home, so I'm like, man, if I quit. They gonna think I quit because I was about to get voted out. It's just gonna look horrible on TV. So I'm like processing this whole thing of like, man, I have to stay at this point because of the optics back home. My wife's gonna be upset. I've been gone this long. But on, on the other hand, I'm just like, I ain't about to let these people play with me like this. Like I don't, I don't need to be here. Like I don't think anybody needed to be here. But I'm like, I came to play a specific game, right? A fair game. And mm -hmm. if you can look at me in my eyes and lie to me. On any time you want, then that ain't the game I want to play. So this is what I told you. This is where I gotta push back on you because for me, you know, I played the game too, and Ooh. I felt like I didn't get a fair share at the game. However, I also feel like my knowledge of the game of Survivor is that like this is the game of survivor like what you think is reality is not necessarily reality and so you've said that you've like binge watching you've seen the twist and the turns like what do you think um what do you think so much of the like i'm trying to figure out like what so much of this twist sets you off well uh, well, well well let's go here right so if you if you watch any season of survivor and you listen to jeff talk what's mm -hmm. the one thing that keeps you safe at tribal council when they immunity. i mean yeah. that, that, that's something that is that is continuous throughout any season so whatever twist they throw into it is a actual twist have you ever seen jeff look at the contestants and literally lie to their faces like not a tribe swab not a super idol not any of that it's literally hey man you got to win this challenge and you got to think about it as you're doing the challenge jeff is walking around there saying you got to fight for everything you got to earn you got to do this you got to do that you know how fake that feels at that moment how as a as a as a competitor for me just just for me personally i don't know how everybody else feels but how can i then go into another challenge and compete like is that is that the is that the point of the game because you actually want people to win to stay safe if you're in trouble the way that you can keep yourself safe is by winning the challenge well if that's no longer the case then what game are you playing that, that's no survivor that I've seen. I would have been good with, I didn't have a problem with the do or dare twist. He didn't lie to me. He told me straight up, hey man, if you play and you lose, this is what happens. This one was totally different. Hey, if I said, hey, hey Wendell, I'm coming on your podcast tonight, right? 
And at seven o'clock, you send me the link, and I'm like, ah, didn't did, didn't feel like it. You like, hey man, you, you feel played, right? This is this is this your livelihood to some to some extent. Kiki, man, to get uh, Kiki, get get Danny. <laughs> Where Danny at? <laughs> Hey so, man, I don't like I don't like being lied to, man. Especially when when I risk what I risk to come out there. Like I said, I had a lot on my mind. I had a baby at home that was six months. My grandma was literally, she had literally. I, I had my last conversation with her before I went on the show, so I'm, I'm knowing what I'm leaving. And then when I get out there to find it, I'm about to be messing around with like that. I'm like, this this ain't worth it. Like I, I can go home. I could stay home for this. I appreciate that in the sense of I don't think that again. You know, you made it a lot farther in the game than I did. Uh, I don't think that I, I necessarily was looking at it like you win a challenge and you're safe. I think that I, as a viewer, and, and I think that maybe a lot of other people would have looked at it as like, it's a twist in the game. But like, just the way that you just explained that to me that like, what does Jeff say? Like, how can you, how can you be safe in the game it is to win? And so I don't think that I processed it that way. So I appreciate that because... I was one of the people, and I ain't gonna lie. I was like, "Wait, it, it's Survivor! What if Danny saw, don't I get it?" You. I saw you. <laughs> you saw him, right? I saw you. you. Saw I saw okay. you. And I, listen, I saw you, and Jeff was explaining that to us in the uh, at Tribal. That was his pushback. Like everybody's mad when we first introduced a twist, tribe swap, this that. I was like, "Bro, but this ain't a twist." Yeah, like, yeah. Like, there's no way that you can you can try to make me feel okay about it. I'm grown, you grown. Ain't no agree to disagree. I just I'm not agreeing on nothing that you talk yeah. about. And then we as we move forward into the show, just so you know, he continues to like get upset when we when we try to tell him that he lied to us. He's like he stops the whole thing. It's like, hey. Listen, we do our best to, to make sure that the, the game is fair and we don't lie to our contestants. And I'm I'm sitting there like, what the, what the hell are you talking about, bro? Yeah. <laughs> you not you not remember what happened three days ago? You lied to us. Isn't it? So yeah. I, I didn't understand the whole process and then him defending it just made me feel even worse. For me, watching that, that was I liked a lot of the twists this season where the, you know there's pushback on a lot. You take risks for certain things, like the beware advantages. But this was the one twist that I really was frustrated with and I, I felt I felt how you were feeling through the screen. Cause especially they have this whole episode with no elimination that's based around this whole challenge and, and earning your way into the merge. And then really, and, and like you said, Jeff says, you know, you got to earn your way to the merge. You win the challenge. You'll be safe at Tribal. And then if I were to win that challenge and then it comes back and Erica, who also her decision was so obvious that there was no like drawback for her, all of a sudden you're vulnerable. I'd just be like, well, what's the point of me trying at the challenges? Like, I don't. And then the people who lose are, are suddenly safe. Like, I was very frustrated with that twist, too. So I totally feel you. When, when, Wendell, what are your thoughts on, on this whole thing? And she yeah, didn't I, lose anything, just so you Just so remember that. She lost nothing. Everybody else lost something. Xander yeah, lost yeah. a vote. You losing all this stuff, risking yeah. stuff. She didn't risk nothing but standing out there yeah. on the island, on Survivor. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of see both sides. Um, first of all, the twist is universally hated. This is a <laughs> twist that we might see next season. We won't see it ever again. So, Danny... <laughs> <laughs> you hemming up probes or whatever you had to do. We're not going to see that twist again, other than probably season 42. Um, nobody on that, on that Island was ever a professional athlete other than you. We were not professional athletes. You played at the highest level with real rules and very strict rules that you knew, right? So you're coming in from a perspective that we will never understand. But on the other side, when I think of uh, Survivor, it's like Hunger Games. Like, these puppet masters can do whatever at any time. So it's like, all right, if he said that, you know, you're immune, all of a sudden you're not immune, man, that's freaking Survivor. Sure. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I understand that that's Survivor. But, so, like, I do understand your perspective, and it's not like I understand their perspective, but I understand survivors hunger games and like what, whatever happens out there. I will say during ghost Island, um, I kind of had a similar experience where uh, I won a challenge. I got finished the slide puzzle first. <laughs> and then you didn't call it. Yeah. I'm on, well, he said I'm you on this tip. He said, he said you didn't call it. <laughs> My sister, Laurel finishes after Jeff, Jeff, I'm done. I'm done. Jeff pulls up on her. Jeff was all the way down there. And obviously he gets to her before me. And I was a little salty. Like, nah, I, I finished first. I'm, I'm out here with it. And the and rules the right were. Cheated. Huh? <laughs> and, you, and you got the right to, you got the right to finish. And furthermore, the rules that he announced to us were the first person to finish wins immunity. 
So at my at my from my perspective, I'm like, man, I could push back right now and I probably would win the argument and probably be immune because he literally said the first person to finish wins immunity. But due to my stance and where I was with Laurel and Don and Don and other people, I'm like, you know what? And I hadn't even if I hadn't won an immunity by that time. So like it would have been my first one. But my my sis, I'm like, you know what? She got it. I didn't call it. I've seen Survivor enough to know that people scream out that they're done and they're ready and they're hype. And there were compliance people and everything. There were 100 producers watching that saw me finish first. But I'm like, you know what? At this point, I'm not going to have that argument um, just for because like, you know, think I thought that yeah, you don't want to go against to Laurel, too. Like, yeah. But uh, yeah. but I say all this to say, Danny, we 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 haven't walked your shoes, you know, I, I played football growing up and basketball and everything, but like you played at the highest level with real rules and survivor is just this whole new world where it's like, it's almost like rules don't exist. And people going on the show, I even tell people going on the show that might, might hit me up. I'm like, yo, do everything you can until they say stop or until they say no, as far as like bending the rules and, and doing whatever to, to win the game, because, because you can uh, like, you can like manipulate the game kind of sort of. So um, that was my rambling way of saying I see both sides, but I hear you on your stance. And I think that I think that what you said is just going to go for They're not going to do that again. I, I'll finish. I'll finish this way. If if I would have known that that was a possibility, I would have never signed up for the show. Wow. If that would have been something that I saw happen on the show previously, I would have never signed up for it. I would have never put myself in that situation. Wow. Well, I'm glad you didn't see it because, like, I enjoy watching you, and I'm glad that I can call you my brother. So I'm glad mm -hmm. you ain't seen nothing like that before. <laughs> so back to the gameplay right around the merge, too. Uh, obviously, in your season, your tribe doesn't go to tribal at all pre-merge. You have the Ua tribe, the Green tribe, going four times, voting four people out, and then Yas is somewhere in the middle voting two people out. For you, as someone who didn't go to a single tribal before the merge, how do you feel like your experience – you know, going into your first tribal compared to someone who like, like Shan or like Ricard who had been going kind of the whole pre-merge, like, was it more nerve wracking? Did you feel like, did you feel a little more comfortable almost? Like what, can you describe that, that, that feeling? I, I think the setting, the setting was, was, it seemed much bigger than it actually is when you get in there. It's like, man, this is, I've been in stadiums. I've been in all these places, but like having all that right there in your face. And it's, it's literally what 11 of you, 12 of you at that moment. So that, that the moment was huge. The situation that I was in didn't really allow me to feel nervous or, or worried about going home. One, because I was on the brink of leaving the game, right? And then I knew I was gonna have to have this conversation with, with Jeff just to let him know how I felt. So I, we, it wasn't like a, a, a full blown argument. It was more, you know, two men just saying, hey, listen, this is this how I feel about it. And him kind of explaining. Mm -hmm. And then I also knew that I was safe. like. The, the people who were voting Deshaun out were telling me that I would have to pick between Deshaun and Sydney. My group is saying that we're voting out every like so there was there was nothing in my mind yeah. saying, like I'm I'm on my way on my way home. So I wasn't nervous in, in, to that aspect, but it was like, well, my friends are in trouble. Like, how are we going to save Sydney and Deshaun? So I was nervous for them, hoping that we would be able to keep them kind of calm, kind of calm, but it it didn't work, man. They they didn't show up, but everybody's running around there talking about playing. They they shot in the dark. Yeah. But you knew you were you were chilling, so it was a little less probably nerve wracking. And I do want to ask real quick: you talked about talking to Jeff at Tribal about that twist, and especially your dissatisfaction. Were any of the other players in the game kind of like taking your side or sort of backing up Jeff? Like, what were, did the other players chime in on that whole situation? Yeah, no, I I, I would say one hundred percent of them supported my argument. Um, Tim but they did were try to push back and say that, that she thought that the, the teams were unfair. And I had to push back on her and say, listen, y'all voted, <laughs> voted out Abraham. Y'all voted out Voce. Y'all voted out, and then y'all voted out uh, Brad. Y'all voted out Strength. Luvu didn't lose a challenge. So we had the opportunity to have the stack tribe. The only person I thought that, that got messed over in that was, was Heather because she didn't, she wasn't on the losing tribe, but she ended up being on the uh, on the team that had the people who voted out what I would say needed that that strength in that uh in that challenge. Was Erica pushing back too? <laughs> I, don't think Erica, I don't think Erica was saying nothing at that point. She, okay. she was just cool. She was playing her game like, yep, I'm in the middle. Nobody's mad at me, so I'm okay. 
So in retrospect, um, is there someone like post or a post merge? Cause I, you know, Jack, I don't know if you know, Jack, I ain't make the merge. Uh, but really? is there, is there somebody <laughs> that you think that you should have aligned with that could have possibly changed the trajectory of like the outcome for you? Or do you feel like the alliances that you made were like what you should have done? I, I, listen, I, I thought I was good. Uh, the, the Sydney vote out really, it, it really threw my game a little bit, but I still was able to depend on, at that point, I thought Xander, at that point, Nasir didn't know that I was going for him. And then I had the, the four with me, Liana, Shan, and Deshaun. So Sean, and Shan also had Ricard. So the numbers were good. So I felt like I felt like I was okay. I I worked with the people that I needed to. I did try to pass things up with Erica. Like I said, when she got back from Exile Island, I was like, listen, the best thing for me to do is tell her, you know, the truth before other people can get to her and say, hey, they didn't really right. play that game. They really just picked you. Um, Olive Branch reached out, but I don't I don't think she was she was really having it. She also thought that I was lying to her because I did tell her that the pe- the, re- the reason that people thought that she was sneaky was because Deshaun said she was sneaky. So her not knowing that he had lied, she thought that I was full of it, in, in my opinion. So she was like, oh, Danny's over here lying on folks. So she she never really trusted me after that. So we, we just weren't able to work together. But I think if I had her, it would have it been better for me. But Deshaun got her. Good. So now if, song- if, I, if, I, if I was out there, <laughs> What would I have been a da- one of Danny's numbers? Listen, listen, we we would have been good. Okay, all until, right. Until, until until you well, unless you unless yeah, not until unless, unless. You proved yourself untrustworthy. I'm I am very loyal to the soil. So listen, okay, that's all I needed to know, good brother. Okay. <laughs> we saw an incredibly uh, vote. Um, sorry, oh, the oh, wine. Oh. We, saw, <laughs> we saw a what? I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry, Wendell. What? I didn't hear you. Second. Hold on a second. Let me have another sip of this wine. Oh, out of my. That's not your protein shake, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't the garbage juice, Danny. I drink the blood of my enemies, Danny. Oh. Uh, that's that's that what takes me a survivor with me. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't drinking blood before you went out there, Danny. You. That's, that's how that Jeff is. stays so young. <laughs> <laughs> so. We saw we saw an incredibly vulnerable moment when you were speaking through the healing process with your with your father out there. This is not a narrative that we usually see on TV, especially we don't see it on Survivor. I was very impressed by the show and the um, the editors for just getting this content out there. And we as the Purple Pants podcast, thank you for being vulnerable and having that moment. Can you just can you just tell us about that time and how how you came to that to that realization and when you won immunity and the the things that you were going through out there? Can you explain it to us? Yeah, I, I, and, and and this is the weird part about that. So you know when you go through the process, they try to figure out you know obstacles that you've overcome, adversity that you face to see if it'll show up on TV. Um, so as we're going through and I'm doing my interviews, like my dad keeps coming up, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't really want to talk about it because at that point, I'm still mad. I don't like that ain't something that I want to that I want to get into. So it continues to come up, and they're like, "Listen, we're just trying to get you to tell your story. We're trying to get people to know you." And my man, I'm like, I ain't talking about that. I came out here to play the game and win a million. I don't care how it looks on TV. Um, and I'm just going through, you know, hanging out or whatever. And I start to hear people say, "May the fourth be with you." So May the fourth is the actual day, right? So you lose track of time, and I'm thinking that. I'm going to be too busy to know that that day is coming. And then I start hearing it and it just takes me to that place. Right. So I'm sitting at the, sitting on the beach. I'm listening to the waves. You get that little time to think to yourself. And I'm like, bro, I've been tripping for a long time. Cause every, every year I would make sure that I was at a bar. I was drinking, I was hanging out with friends, playing cards. I was keeping busy. So I didn't really have to wrestle with those thoughts. Um, so being on the Island forced me to, to really come head to head with, with how I had been feeling uh, about my dad. So having that moment was good. I loved it. Um, it was way more tears and way more sniffling uh, than they showed. Than they showed, but I just kept saying, man, I don't cry at all. And my friend's going to laugh me out of the building. Um, but I was glad they showed it because that is a conversation that I hadn't had with any of my family members mm-hmm. and no uncles, no aunts, no, my, not my mom, not my wife. So that was the first time that they 
had heard that. And my mom would always say, I still don't think you ever processed uh, the, the whole death of your father. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's, it's, it is what it is. But now we've been able to kind of peel back those layers, open up and talk about it. And I think it's, it's brought me and my family closer. So it was it, it was a great experience to be on there and, and have that moment. That That's great. We like, like I said, we don't always see those moments. And I think you opening up is going to encourage other people too. Um, and I, I remember just being on that Island. It does stuff like that for people. Sometimes it touches people different ways. I remember on the edge of extinction, um, I, I talked to Yule and he was having conversations like, man, I need to love my, my wife better. Like I need to be a better husband to her and to my children. And uh, Jeremy said the same thing. He's like, man, I'm out here and my kids are growing up and I need to be there for Val. Like you come to, so there's something that happens out there because I guess you're detached from so many things that sometimes you have these moments or these epiphany, epiphany moments. And we thank you for having that because that was uh, a beautiful moment that I think a lot of people can learn from. Appreciate that. When, if you can sit still with your thoughts, turn everything off. Uh, sit, sit back with your thoughts for a minute and see what comes up. You don't, don't, don't intentionally think of anything, just see what comes to mind. And, and sometimes you'll get that survivor moment, but it's nothing like being out there on that island and, and having that, that type of distance and silence. It, that, that's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So usually at a certain point in our podcast, we like to play a game or a competition with uh with our guests we ain't gonna lie to you we we gonna tell you we gonna tell you we what giving it you is. the rules we let you know up front are you sure are y'all sure because <laughs> me me and me and jack good i don't know about what doing right <laughs> no, don't do that don't. <laughs> he, kiki he acting up again come, wait, come, come, come get him oh my all right well on this particular uh this particular game is word association uh oh okay all so right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the rules. All you have to do is within five seconds, spit out the first thing that comes to your mind in response to the word that I give you. Okay. I'm cool okay. I'm the timekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Jack is Jeff Probst. <laughs> yeah. Oh, should I get my, should I get my, come on in. Oh, <laughs> Be honest, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what, this is a Jeff you could trust. <laughs> He's Jeff Trust. <laughs> Jeff Trust. I look a little older too, but <laughs> Wendell, is that your buff collection in the background? Uh, oh, while we're at it. Hey guys. Okay. This is so a... wait, but Danny, so I heard through the conversation you seen go silent because you talked about that time when Laurel. One fair and square. Um, have you seen Kagi on? Yeah, I've seen Kagi on. Oh, okay. I've seen I've seen from like season fourteen all the way up through through the current. Okay, season. well, listen, you only need to see the first two episodes of Kagi on. It ain't much you need to see. Br Bryce was actually on Kagi on, believe it or not. He if was. you didn't know, I think I slept through the first. Danny <laughs> Kiki. <laughs> Real quick, what was, what was your favorite season? Uh. Let me see. So I, I got what, what season was it where they hop off the boat and it's literally the dudes. They got spears and all type of stuff uh, on the beach. It looked like they had just hopped off uh, like the movie for King Kong, the first King Kong. When they, they get to this island, and they like doing this sacrifice and passing potions around that they got to eat and drink. I want to say like maybe season 15. That's the, whatever it was. It was the first one I watched. And that's what kind of got me into it. I was like, man, these people are crazy as hell. Mm -hmm. Like, they, I think it was like, I don't want to say it was blood, but they were passing something. Yeah, I thought that was, was that's that season Samoa. nine? Was that nine? That's Vanuatu? Not... It's one of those early ones. Because uh, it, was, it was early. Only one of those drinking the blood these days. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not HD. So it was definitely. Oh, I think it might have been Vanu, Vanuatu. Yeah, Vanuatu. Yeah. yeah. Island of the Fires. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll say that was my favorite just because. That's the one that got me hooked when Gosh, I turned yeah. it on. I'm like, yeah, this all right. This this yeah. might be something I can get into, man. They they about to get serious because yeah, they not doing that stuff these days. <laughs> no, all right, um, should we? And should then we your this? second favorite is uh, Ghost Island. We know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Word association. Wait, Kagiyan. All right, Danny. This podcast could be over real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kagiyan, Ghost Island, uh, Millennials, Gen, all that. Yeah, yeah all and that. Jack, what's your season? 
My favorite season? No. Oh, oh, my bad. Oh. I, thought you, I thought you was on the season. My bad. I was, Bryce. Uh, I was on this season. season is it got circle. more views than y'all. Oh, oh. 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 Right. It's, all right, I mean, guys. You know, guys, it's not about thing. us. All right, Jeff Probst right. face. Danny, I ain't gonna lie to you. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> all right, Danny, are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Word association. First word. Probst. <laughs> lie. Oh. Cajun food. Uh, Louisiana. Hourglass. Hate it. Girl dad. I would say me, but I'm going with my man Kobe Bean Bryant. Mm. Oh. On, on today, okay. Ricard. Ah, my guy. Mm. Barbecue. MLK Day. Diarrhea. <laughs> a so I wish deep. I had on the island. <laughs> John Madden. Legend. Eagles. Trash. Oh! <laughs> Trash. Enjoy Get him out. This game can end really quick. <laughs> Erica. A winner. Sydney. Dope. Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gastrointestinal distress. <laughs> Painful. Euphoria. Favorite show. Oh, what you know about Rue? What you know about Rue? <laughs> Ask that guy. Ask that guy. All right. Okay. All right. Back. Good. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Foxy Brown. Uh, legend. 49ers. Uh, hate them. Mm. Ghost Island. Wendell. The number 40. Bill Bates. Kagayan. Great season. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alan Ball. <laughs> Another my guy. Heather. Uh, good, good woman. This guy's a politician out here. <laughs> Regina King. Oh, man. Uh, goodness. Triple yep. crowd, triple best, best at what she does. Mm. Chitlins. <laughs> I ain't eating them. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna see his next video. Deshaun. <laughs> oh, my brother. Bunyan. I had one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Purple the Pants cleats, Podcast. Man, the what was it? <laughs> Purple Pants Podcast. Great. A.B. Alan Ball. Antonio Brown. <laughs> Confused. Kanye. Confused. Tara Owens. Great. Hemorrhoids. Painful. Bryce. Very entertaining. Orenthal James Simpson. He did it. <laughs> True. Shan. Uh, we need to talk. Crabs. One of my favorite seafoods. This summer. Fatherhood. Uh, best feeling ever. Chucky. That's my ace boom cool. <laughs> <laughs> Washington football team. Uh, get a name. <laughs> Nasir. Uh, adventurous. Last one, Dallas Cowboys. America's team. Danny yeah. wins individual <laughs> immunity. <laughs> that was great. That was great. All right. Now we, we back in it. The, the camp out, a.k.a. the Black Alliance. Mm -hmm. You, Deshaun, Liana, and Shan came together and made for some powerful TV moments uh, and never before seen in Survivor. Uh, and me being a huge fan of Survivor, I never thought that I would actually like see the day. How did it feel when you guys all came together? Uh, it was it was good. Like you said, it was, it's something that, that I didn't expect to be able to do. I literally thought Shan was going to get voted out uh, way before uh, they got down to two. 
Uh, I was I was a little sad that Abraham didn't make it because I'm like, yeah, we got all these black people on the show. And like, Abraham, first one to get up out of here. I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> uh, but it, it was cool that we had four um, and it's, it's Survivor. So any reason that you can you can find to, to align with somebody, somebody that you that you think you can trust it, is great. And the fact that it was that the, the I guess the what we were leaving at home with George Floyd, Amal Arbery and, and seeing all that. Yeah, I, I think it was it was just a, a natural thing that was going to happen with with anybody who was on that show at that time. A thousand percent agree. And shout out to Abraham. I follow him on Instagram <laughs> and I feel like we were robbed because that, <laughs> that man looks funny. hilarious, funny. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were robbed. They got him up out of there. They got him up out of there, man. <laughs> And and obviously within that alliance, uh, within that alliance, you guys kind of ran things for the most part after the merge. But we see time and time again, specifically Shan and Deshaun have a really complex relationship, uh, not on the same page a lot of the times, all things considered. As someone who was, you know, directly adjacent to that duo, what was your take on their dynamic and how did you kind of fit in there as like the third member of that group? Uh, the dynamic was, was strange. It was strange just because, like I said previously, Deshaun was there to play a specific type of game where he was going to, to, to try to make somebody think something, even if he had to lie about it, right? So, and I was okay with that. Shan wanted to play a different type of game. So she saw, she saw Deshaun's what type? game as, huh? What type of game? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, I'm sorry. Shan wanted to play like, I'm in my mind, like I'm running stuff type of game. Like I, I'm going to make the decisions. I'm going to make sure that this is the route that we go. Um, and she saw Deshaun as being sneaky, which which he was. So it's not like she was wrong about that, but she was wrong about the fact that he was going to vote her out at whatever time she thought he was. And Deshaun was wrong about Shan and the fact that he assumed that she would never listen to, to what he was saying or that he could never beat her if she was at the end. I don't, I don't see those things as being true, but those are sort the of things that kept making them bump heads like Deshaun's game is not going to be able to be played with Shan and Shan's is not going to be able to be played with Deshaun because he wanted to be the guy who was making the moves and, and doing the uh, doing all the all the big big moments on Survivor you wow. as the middle person did you feel like the need to try to like bring them together or you being the middle person could see like it's no point to try to do that. Let me just like salvage my relationship with both of them to see where the, like the chips could fall. Nah, I think that's the most frustrating part about the actual Shan vote out was I put a lot of work in to make sure that we all stayed together, specifically Shan and Deshaun because they were the only two that were beefing, but it was literally days and days of work. Me and Shan would go out on the beach early in the morning. We would talk about the Bible and we would also talk about people's attitudes and how they look and how they see them on TV just to try to move forward. And then I would then go talk to, Desha to Deshaun, who would say, man, I don't know if we can work with Shan. And then we have these long conversations about, nah, man, just reel it in. We're going to be OK. There'll, there'll come a time when we're able to, to make a move like that. But this just isn't the time. And this was like an everyday thing. Yeah. Every day they found a reason to not like each other, to go to go at each other's throats and say, hey, I don't trust. And I'm hearing it all right, because I'm the middle point between between both of them. So it, it, it was rough. It was a lot of work put in. And to see it kind of crumble the way it did, that, that was the most frustrating part about it. Do you think that there was ever a path for the Black Alliance to get to the end? Like, could could that have ever been fixed? This It seems like the Deshaun and Shandine, it seems like Deshaun is not going to want to sit next to her at the end or whatever. Is there a world in which you guys could have patched something up? Yeah, let, let Shan go at four. Or whatever. Is, is there any, or that would have never happened? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't know how they felt about it, but I was there to win a million dollars. So when everybody's like, yeah, I was going to get a million dollars to this person and that, I'm like, all right, y'all crazy. No, we could make it to a point to say, we're, listen, we moved this alliance as far as we could. And one of us will be sitting at the end, possibly too, to, to make it a, a more probable that, that one of us will win. But I didn't see that. It was like whoever was going to poke their head out as being the biggest threat was the person I was going to say I'm not sitting next to. But at that point, it was Shan, but we still just needed one more vote so we can get four to three for us to be able to do that. And we exactly. just we yeah. just we just couldn't make it that far. So we see the first boot out of the camp out with Shan. Like, how did we arrive to that vote? Uh, yeah. So one, so we already had all the turmoil going on between Shan and, and Deshaun. They have that conversation in the morning to where they lock it in and they're all good. 
Um, we, I think we have that reward challenge where Shan, Xander, Heather, and whoever else, uh, Ricard, they all go on a pizza challenge. I walk back, hey, Deshaun, I think it's time for us to get out Ricard. Pull in Liana, hey, Liana, I think this is what we should do. It's pitched that we should leave Shan out of it because she she probably won't be on board with it. I stop it. I'm like, hey, listen, when Shan gets back, I'm going to have this conversation with her because that's how this alliance is going to work. We're going to make sure everybody's on the same page. I'm cool with that. Everybody locks in. We're fine. What I find out is Liana and Deshaun that night go sit in the shelter and they're actually having a conversation about when and how to vote Shan out. Not at that vote. But as they move further, because as you hear Liana say, I don't want to be seen as just following Shan. Deshaun obviously knows that Shan has to go out at some time. So they're both having this conversation. Wow. I'm not privy to it. I had no idea what's going on. So I didn't find this out until I got to Ponderosa. Um, so they have that conversation. Shan comes back. Me and her go do our morning thing. I have this long conversation with her about Hey, listen, can you trust Ricard? Do you really think you could trust him? I'm going to like the mob movies at this time. Like, hey, can you, are you vouching for this dude, right? Because you know, if you vouching for him, that means if he messes up, it's on mm -hmm. you. She's like, right. yes, I can trust him, I'm sure. And I'm like, but it's still time to vote him out. This is why you have to vote him out. Your family and friends is here. Like, you want to move to four, you need to get rid of him so we can get to the end. She finally breaks down and she's like, all right, I'm down. She's, she's in tears at this point, but she's like, all right, I'm down. I get up and I say, hey, man, make sure you're not crying when you walk back over to the camp because they're going to know something is going on. I'm like, all right, I leave. Sure enough, I walk back by. I see Liana and Shan boo-hooing in the shelter. I'm like, oh, God, like what is what is going on? Come to find out, Liana now feels guilty about having the conversation with Deshaun mm -hmm. and then tell Shan that Deshaun and me are coming after her, which is not true. What Liana doesn't say is, hey, me and Deshaun were having this conversation. Mm. We were talking about voting your ass out. Mm. How did you feel about being wrapped up in, oh, Danny, this is so good. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. How did you feel being wrapped up in that? Like, that would piss me off. Well, well, I, well now, now I'm, I'm more upset just because as you go and you listen to podcasts and you listen to what everybody's saying, I feel like there's a major lack of accountability. And I'm big on accountability. Hey, man, be accountable, all right? Hey, Liana, you had this conversation. And mm -hmm. you felt guilty about it. And then you told Shan. What you did not do is go tell Deshaun that you were going to rat him out. Bryce, if me and you are talking stuff about Wendell, right? We go home and then we all together. Uh, I'm like, you go back behind my back and be like, hey, guess what? Hey, man, hey, Danny was talking mess about you. But you don't say, oh, yeah, we was having a laugh at you. I'm going to be pissed off, right? right? I, because right, you ain't no. taking accountability for, for what you said. Um, so that happens and this throws everything into chaos, right? Because now Shan believes that me and Deshaun are coming after her, which is not true at that point. Like I'm, I'm on Shan's side, we're good. She feels like she can't trust us. She then goes to uh, Ricard and tells Ricard and says she wants to vote out Deshaun. Deshaun. The reason why Deshaun is upset is because I came up with the plan to vote out Ricard. And somehow Shan goes and tells Ricard that Deshaun came up with a plan to vote him out. So he's like, I didn't even say that. Like, that ain't even my plan. Why, why are you telling Ricard a plan that's not even mine, ruining a relationship that we had? So now everybody's mad, right? So we can't get it, we can't get it on the wraps. I go to Shan, I'm like, hey, let's take a trip to the water well. Hey, what were you crying about and what were you telling people? She was like, oh, nothing. I was telling people my stomach hurt. I'm like, oh, she lying. <laughs> yeah, she absolutely mm. lying. Whatever. Well, at that point, I didn't know she was lying. So I'm like, okay, we do the challenge. We come back and Ricard. I mean, somebody comes up and was like, "Hey, we're going to vote out Shan." I was like, well, "Why are you going to do that?" And he said, "Hey, Ricard is on board." I said, "Listen, all right, we'll bring Ricard over here. Ricard needs to tell me mm. why and that he is on board because, like I said, Shan vouched for him. Came over. Yes, he told me exactly what she told him, and I'm like. Oh, hell nah. Mm. After all the work I done did to keep this together, this is how we gonna end this? So I'm like, I, I I gave you a chance to tell me what you and Ricard talked about previously. You didn't say nothing. And then Ricard comes and tells me that you told the plan. Now, to her defense, Liana <laughs> started all this because she, she has no idea that I'm not coming after her or Deshaun is talking about voting her out at like five or six. So she has every right to go and, and feel the way that she feels about not trusting anybody. But in mind, I'm just like, y'all, you know, everybody's all pissed off at each other. But 
take accountability for what you said and what you did, and then we can all be good. Mm -hmm. But it's still running out here of like this missing link of like, hey, listen, Leon and Deshaun, y'all had a conversation about voting her out. That's what it started at. So don't talk about, you know, Deshaun couldn't take uh, take any orders from a woman or mm -hmm. if, if you was white or all this other stuff makes absolutely no sense. They were good. Everything was fine. Deshaun wasn't taking orders from anybody. So I, I got. I just want to stand up here and defend the dude because he been getting beat up. Deshaun yeah. don't have no problem with no white people. He don't have no problem with no black people. He's just a young man trying to win a million dollars to pay off his student loans. All right, it don't, it don't have anything to do with none of that. What happened was how I said it. Liana Deshaun had this conversation. Shan comes to Liana. Liana feels guilty, spills the beans, but she does not include herself in having that conversation. She mm. replaces me with her. And then Shan no longer trusts me and Deshaun, and then she gets voted out. Yeah. And, and with that vote, and uh, yeah, like you said, everything kind of just went haywire. And it must be so complicated when you have this alliance that's built on more than just the game. And then, you know, game elements come into play where you got to throw certain people under the bus and everything. There's a lot of miscommunication. But ultimately, like you said, Shan does get blindsided. That was sort of one of the first big blind sides of the game and you were directly like entrenched in that move. How did that feel for you to blindside someone, you know, outside of it being Shan, just that, that, that feeling, were you excited about it or did it kind of hurt to, to, to make that move? Uh, well, to, well, the first, the first big blind side to me, just because Evie had finished the puzzle so quickly and then we split, Evie literally thought that we were going to vote out Liana. So that, yeah. that, that to me was, was a big one. Mm. This one was different just because it was, it was off principle. It was like the one time that I played the game with emotion, it was like, hold on, man, we had this conversation. Like me and you are supposed to be rocking. We go do this stuff every morning. And I trust you. You trust me. And then I, tell you we're voting out Ricard and then Ricard comes and tell me that you told him. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, this is outside. Like, I just got to do what I got to do to yep. get you out of here because you never going to pick us over Ricard. So it wasn't, it wasn't even like a, like I'm happy to blindside Shan or none of that. It was just like, I it had know, to be uh, done. Like, yeah. like we, we did everything we could. It just didn't work out. Yeah. Watch it. Wow. Well, we are the self-proclaimed Shan Stan podcast. And but no, no, and, no, and nothing, nothing wrong with that, right? But we're also a we we were the Black Alliance Stand podcast. Bryce is the Xander Stand podcast. <laughs> Jack is the Xander Stand. We we have a lot of favorites this season, and you were one of our favorites, clearly, right? And Absolutely. that's one of the reasons why we called you because we wanted to hear. You know, there are everyone has their truth and their side of these things. Mm -hmm. So um, we appreciate you you know, telling us that missing link, that Liana and Deshaun conversation that everyone hasn't really heard about. So thank you. Which um, is unfortunate that because, because Wendell Bryce Jack, I've had many conversations with me and Shannon have had multiple conversations, hour long conversations, me and Deshaun have as well. Everybody has this information, which is why I'm so confused of why it has not come out yet. Like I understand everybody want to have each other back and do all that, but it's easy to just come on there and be honest. We were playing the game, and if you, you know, if you're gonna bash somebody, then you know, hold yourself accountable as well, or hold yeah. your sister accountable. Like I don't have any problem with Liana, Shan, or Deshaun. I'm, I'm just, I'm living my life, having a good time. We are all gonna be cool or we're not. But the, the, the lies and the, and the deception and all that stuff. I'm just like, come on, bro, just be honest and yeah. give everybody a true story and let them make their own judgments off that. Because you you know how it is on social. You getting beat up for being, you know, you can't take this from a woman and this and that. And I'm like, bro, my mom got three kids. She had three jobs. She worked from nine nine p nine uh, four a.m. to nine p.m. clean people's house on the weekend. I was born and, and raised by nothing but strong women. I don't have any problem taking orders from there's nothing but strong women around me. This is my wife's office. So that one that would that would touch me of like, nah, you can't just be saying mm. stuff like that about about somebody just because that may be the experience that you had in the real world. If we don't have those type of conversations and you can't call me and say that, then I, I just feel like it's a little out of bounds. Yeah. Okay. Especially once it's all said and done, I feel like, you know, you can, yeah. you can. Yeah. Yeah. So my, from my experience within the survivor community and I'm not telling you how to act, you know, but the only thing that I have noticed has been good for me, someone who has had a great season, and someone who has had a not so great season is that as time passes, 
I've appreciated being able to like understand whatever it was out on the island and however many external factors might have influenced people's decisions on the island or whatever, and just try to find a way. I, I think more more bridges and more connections and being cool with people, especially in this con- community, goes a long way just in the long run. So I'm not telling you, you know, I'm just I'm just saying what has helped me going forward. I do want to ask you, what is your relationship like with Shan nowadays? Listen, b- b- before I heard y'all's podcast, me, me, like Shan and my wife are, are cool. They talk on Instagram, whatever. We hung out at the at the reunion. Me and Shan, like I said, we have had our long conversation. Anytime something comes up, we FaceTime. We have a good conversation, which is why I was so surprised to hear that on the podcast because that is not any of the conversations that we had had while we were talking on the phone. Like when we got off the phone, she was like, oh, I get it. I understand why Deshaun sees it this way or whatever. And then on the podcast, it's something totally different. So mm-hmm. I text her and I'm like, you know, we could talk, but at this point, I'm just, I'm so upset that I just need to take a step back and then process it and then move forward. Cause you know, the, the, you know people have to realize the stuff that you say can affect other people's livelihoods. Like, you know, I'm doing other stuff around here. So for you to say that, you know, I got a problem with women and them taking, you know, orders mm-hmm. and the, the patriarchy and all the other stuff. It's just, it just, it doesn't job with what I got going on. Right. Definitely. Would you have wanted to go to the end with like the all black alliance, like in your, like from the position that you're at in the merge or were you side, were you already thinking of like, what best gets you the million dollars? Did you feel, or were you feeling like, I want to represent for the culture. I want to just go with the camp out or like, what was your thoughts about like the end, the final four for you? Yeah, listen, it, it, it would have been great to, to do all that. And that would have been a perfect story written and all those stuff. Like I said, I wasn't there to give anybody a million bucks. If I thought that one of the four was playing better than me mm. and they and they poked their head up of being the biggest move, I was willing to do what I had to do to get them out so I could win a million dollars. Like it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Like I'm not saving the, saving the world by saying that I'm giving somebody else a, a million bucks. Like we did what we had to do. We worked together and then we fought it out at the end to see who could win the game. So it, it wasn't that serious to me. At that point in the merge, Shan was emerging as, as the person who was making all the moves, which was fine because at that point I'm like, whoever figures out a way to get her out of the game then has a head up. And then it moved on to Ricard. Now Ricard is the guy, so whoever figures out a way to get Ricard out is probably going to win this game. Erica did it. And ironically, Erica comes out as the winner of the game. Wow. Despite whoever is the winner of the game, I just have to give you a lot of props because – Again, I'm like, why y'all still got Danny in here? He's a pro- he's a professional athlete. But what I have to say is like, again, I- I'm one of those like dedicated fans. I like I drink while I watch. I get excited, and I have to say like the thing that like gave me the most respect for you was that like ain't nobody was trying to write your, write your name down. Ain't nobody had nothing like negative to say other than Wendell. <laughs> but Dang, I'm Wendell? like it, it really <laughs> I'm one of the first to buy your shirt I started this Danny, trend and we, you see Bryce Danny, then you see Lauren and everyone Kiki wants your shirt invoices. have Kiki check the invoices and see who bought it first that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> but no but like what I what Kate like what I I'm like watching it and I'm like let me find out Danny about to be the winner because like nobody had anything bad to say about you and I yeah. have to say Danny like I admired you a lot, but listening to you, I'm like, well, damn it. If I'm on the island with with him, I like, he about to be my guy. Like, I just have to say, like, I I see why no one was coming for you. Like you are a a very stand up guy. And for me to just even be like an openly gay black man and like have these little cutups with you, like I feel comfortable. And I like, I, even though it's through zoom and you know, your zoom say Kiki, but like, you know, (laughs) I I feel like, I I feel like I'm on the Island and I, I, I have a better understanding of why you succeeded. Why yeah. you succeeded? Like you know, I I just I just wanted to put that out there. I think as a I think as a viewer, a lot of the discussion we had throughout the season was how you, you were sort of hidden in the edit at times. But look, there was I think there came a point where we realized 
it might have been you know final eight final nine something like that you were you were the last person to receive a vote the whole season you were sort of at the epicenter of a lot of different little alliances like you were definitely playing a really strong game uh from the get-go i mean i think you and deshaun as a duo had your had your finger on the pulse of the luvu tribe from the from the jump so it was a really impressive game to watch yeah yeah, I, I would say this, man. That the, the twist got me when we had to vote out Evie. I, I think, I, I, as I think back on it, I think I would have made it further in the game if I did not have to lie to Xander at that vote. Mm. Like me and Xander were cool at that vote, yeah. and I had to lie to him so Liana didn't get voted out. And then you know, then Liana ends up spoiling the, you know, mm. whatever. So you know, I, I already goes, but I think that relationship would have been something that would have carried me a little further. As well. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> ask. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta ask real quick as a good friend of Xander's uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about you know hitting that merge beach with him and how you how you guys uh, created that relationship and what it was like between the two of you yes I, I think me me and Xander started just on a, like a we were we were doing the marooning and he was trying to get one of the paddle uh, pedals and I was and I bumped him a little bit to let him know that this is gonna be a physical game and I'm not letting him get by so oh. when we got to the top of the trek he was like hey man I really respect like how you came to play man you you know what I'm saying? You bring it. And I was like, oh, yeah, man, look, look, you like the physical dude as well. If we ever get to the same beach, then, then we could definitely lock it in and work together. As soon as we get to the beach, I'm, I'm thinking that we're, we're cool. We're able to work and it works out for us because he ends up being safe. And we just kind of continue to have those type of conversations on like real life stuff. He's like, I'm from Chicago. He hadn't told me that he was like making an app or doing any of that stuff yet. So I'm just like thinking of him as a young 20. 20 year old who might want to find his way in shot town i played for the bears i'm like listen we get out of here you know what i'm saying i know people in chicago if you need something then you call me and let me know right mm -hmm. just and, and i was being 100 genuine about it and i think him feeling that and, and seeing that and, and being able to listen to me talk about that i think that helped our relationship grow out there on the island mm -hmm. Danny, I will. Oh, go ahead, Bryce. Perk has something to say. When he gets really close to the, when he gets really close, you know he has something to say. You see his forehead; it becomes like a projection screen. It starts shining. Go ahead, Perk. Let us you, know. You know about you know anybody in Philly, Danny? Like, you, you know, like <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody in Philly because I don't frequent Philly like that. Because that's that's just you not, know two people in Philly. Stop playing, Danny. I'm, I'll be at a, I'll be at, a, uh, at one of y'all events. I'll be I'll come to an event. Oh, and, let's not, go. Not an exclusive. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Hey, they, hey, they, they look lit now. They look oh, lit. I like I'm to listen. have a good time. Yeah, People right. love the Bryce and and Jack presents. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, what? Okay. Jack, Jack are, are you getting in on these on these events next season? We we might have to do a Jack and Sam presents Chicago. I don't know because we're both out here. <laughs> look at Bryce's face. He's sick. Bryce we'll, is sick. we'll cut y'all in on the uh we'll give y'all 90 percent of the profits <laughs> oh man yeah danny i think well how old were you when you got on like when you were on the island how old were you uh 33 33 33 i had just turned 33 because we left march 20th and i turned 33 on march 10th oh wow you're older than me i didn't realize that <laughs> Bryce is the oh, oldest man. one on this podcast. Don't Danny, do that. Don't. don't, don't. Um, do that. Bryce is in his uh, early to late fifties, twenties. <laughs> Come on, but, Bryce. Well, you got your hairline still good though. Listen, right. you is it? <laughs> you you say it? Bryce. Anyway, so we're on to the next question because uh, okay, we're okay, not okay. about to do. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, as I was saying, Danny. So you got on at thirty three. That's when I was on Ghost Island, and from my experience. Like I said, I didn't play sports like you, but I played a lot of sports. You learn so many lessons playing sports and you get to see so many people and you get to, you win and you lose and, and you lose and you get back up. And so when I saw you interact with Heather, when she couldn't do whatever it was, I'm like, the man, the man played pro sports at the highest of levels, them losing this challenge on the beach is nothing to him. And he, of course, he's going to be picking her up. That's in his pedigree. That's mm -hmm. that's what he knows. But also being a 33 year old man, I thought from my ex my life experience, highs and lows and everything, everything, that was just the right time for me to get on and to do well on on Ghost Island. It's like if I would have been on as an 18 year old, 1920, I don't think I would have had the life experience. I, I would have thought that I maybe I would have played a JD game. Everything that I would have said, I think that everyone will buy, you know, and then I get out of there early um you made it far you played a great game you had all of these great connections with everybody 
but you know, there's only one winner and ultimately yeah. down the line, you got, you got blind, uh, not blindsided, but you got voted out. Right. What was it like? What was that experience? I mean, you played a great game. It happens. You get voted out. How did that feel? Listen, I, by, by the time I got voted out, I was okay. I, I had been through the ups and downs. The hourglass twist that hit me. I felt like I fought the good fight. I was trying to get Ricard out. And I, if I was going to die trying to get Ricard out, the person I thought was the biggest threat, I was okay with that. No other way would I have been okay with it, but I was good with it. And then on top of that, I had I, I had come to, to, to terms with, with something that was way bigger than the game with, as far as me being able to forgive my father and forgive myself. So I was I was cool to walk out of there with without winning. Now would I like to win? Absolutely. Yeah, like like I I didn't I wouldn't give up a million bucks. But I think it's I think that makes sense to what you said, which is how I wanted to go into the game. The survivor, anybody who listens, all right, survivor at the end of the day is about people. You can go into it whatever with whatever game plan you have because you watched a lot of seasons. You can do the shields, you can do the goats, whatever, come with the lingo, but you cannot implement any of those plans unless you know people. Learn learn people, get some life experience, hang around different types of people so you can see how they interact, see how they uh, respond to adversity. Like seeing people respond to adversity will tell you everything you need to know about them. Seeing how they respond in pressure situations will tell you everything you need to know about a person. If you're able to sit back and realize that that's what's going on, you can learn a lot about people. And that that's the game. Social experiment, man. Just just figuring out what people what people are doing, what they're thinking, reading the room. That's that's the biggest parts of success in Survivor. And Erica, Erica had that at the end. She she was she's been in those buildings and those in those meetings to where she was reading the room and seeing how people felt about her and what they thought about her. And then she was able to hop out and be like, hi, I'm the boss. Mm, So it it, it helped her. And and speaking about those interactions, right when you get voted out, you go to Ponderosa and just from seeing it and and seeing the season and seeing the Ponderosa clips, the vibes were a little bit intense. There was some tension there. Uh, A lot of people on the jury feeling betrayed or having some sort of animosity towards people, you know, on the jury or still in the game as the newest juror. Uh, and as the season kind of progressed on the line as a jury member, how did you navigate those Ponderosa relationships? Like, what, what were you trying to mend fences? Were you, like, what, what was what was the vibe there? I think w- with the game I played, I, I I didn't believe that I had any fences to mend, right? Because with the sham vote, what I had believed to be true led me to vote her out of me telling her a plan and then her going and telling her number one at the time when we we have the force. So I'm like, you deserve to get voted out. Uh, everybody that everybody else that was voted out had great relationships with within the game. So I didn't have to make up for anything. The only thing they want to know is why I lied to them about being a cowboy player. But the interaction between me, me and Shan when I first got out, that was probably one of the most intense reactions that I've had, like person to person. The confrontation was like super intense. I'm once again telling people, hey man, if you allow somebody to talk to me like this, then I can buy my own plane ticket home because what you're going to do is you're going to put me in a situation to where now I have to raise my voice and look like I'm being the man that's talking crazy to a woman. Like it got to to that, but within like an hour, we were able to calm down and we had the conversation and everybody was fine. The next day she comes up and tells me that Liana told whatever, and we all are able to kumbaya. Uh, Deshaun didn't get that moment, which is why he, he got handled at, uh, Mm. at, at tribal council which was unfortunate, um, but navigating that was easy. Like outside of the Shannon and Liana thing, we were all drinking, having a good time, eating Snickers and smoking cigars for, for the rest of the time we were at Ponderosa. Was there anything we didn't see at that final tribal that is worth noting? Uh, I, I will say that I, I think they showed the question with Deshaun and, and Shan asking her, her asking him if, if like she used the, used the move, movement to get her to whatever. Uh, they showed that uh, Xander was asked a question, I would not say by who, that I thought was also along those lines of being out of bounds and not allowing these guys to be able to to explain how they played the game because now they have to defend their character. Mm. It was something along the line of like, do you see your, like, do you underestimate women of color or something like that? And I was like, oh, you know, whoa, what are we talking about? Like these dudes like up here trying to trying to win a million bucks and you can see it on Deshaun's face and you can see it on Xander's face that 
it kind of took them out of being able to explain like what they were doing in the game. Cause now you're on the defense. Like, like how can I, cause you know, you're on TV. So now you have to figure out how you can make this look right on television. So they didn't show that. I thought it was unfortunate, but emotions are high in these games and people are trying to find ways to, to, to get you to, to lose at that point. And we see during that tri that final tribal council, you were asking really great questions. I thought one of the questions that you asked to Erica was so thought provoking and it really gave her an opportunity, which left us as viewers like, well, wait a minute, whose side is Danny really on? And we see ultimately you're the only juror that votes for the baby boy that is Deshaun. Can you walk us through like your reasoning and like why you decided to vote for him? The very, very, very simple, very straightforward reason. All right. Me and Deshaun had been together from day one. So what I saw from Deshaun was growth within the game. Right. So Deshaun started off as super emotional, trying to figure out how he could be as devious as he wanted to be, telling lies and then coming to a realization that he needed to slow down a little bit. He survived the hourglass twist. He was with me and winning every challenge in the first part of the game. He survived do or die one of the best fire makers that, he, that, that you've ever seen. He survived all this and was still sitting at the end of the game. So I know Deshaun's game. So when I'm asking Erica, what they don't show is, I ask her that question. She then puts me on hold to go respond to someone's else, someone else's question. Mm. And I'm like, okay. So it comes back to me and I ask her again. She doesn't answer. Jeff stops and says, Erica, Danny's throwing you a softball. Mm. And then she, then they show her answering the question. Oh yeah, I did. And I was like, that's why I said, listen, intentional or unintentional, that's the game that I wanted to play. But you couldn't answer straight when I first asked you, hey man, was your game intentional or not? So I gave it to uh, Deshaun. I was looking for any reason not to give it to him and her not answering my question until the third time when Jeff was like, hey, answer this guy's question. He's trying to get you to win. I was like, yeah, nah, I'm all right. I'm going to vote for Deshaun. Mm -hmm. Did was there something to you saying um, or was there something inside you? Because on Winners at War, I wanted I me and a few of us were trying to find a way to get our girl, Michelle, second place. Um, was there something in you saying, you know what, I'm going to find a way to get my boy second place. I've been riding with him. I've seen his game. He might not be putting it to words how he should be right now, but I know his game. At the very least, I'm gonna try to get this man second place. Was there any of that in you? I, I'm a, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. Thinking about, I wasn't even thinking about how like you winning second place or how they how they divvied that up at the end. Like I, I wasn't even I didn't remember like the prize money that was shown. It had nothing to do with that. It was literally like I know what he did, Eric. I need to know what you did, and since you can't tell me, then I'm gonna vote for Deshaun. What what I will say, being fair, also went into it was. I saw what was happening to, to Deshaun and Xander on that thing. So I know they weren't going to be able to explain themselves. So I could only go off what I knew that they did in order for me to place my vote. Were there politics on Ponderosa as far as people pulling people one way or another for as, as far as the vote? Because, you know, people are on, on Ponderosa for however long and trickling in there and talking about people's games. And, um, you know, there could be strong personalities leaning one way and convincing people one way and others leaning the other way. Was, was that at play at all? Did you go in knowing like, Oh man, there's a lot of people leaning Erica or. Yeah. Listen, when Ricard got off, got off that island, he came in hard for Erica. He came in hard. He didn't, he couldn't eat his food first before he was saying how Erica was doing all this and she was the baddest person in the game and she needed to win. Wow. So that is the first the first news that we had about Erica because everybody was trying to figure out who was running stuff. So Ricard came in and told us who it was who was making these decisions. And then you know that Tiffany is not on with Xander or Deshaun. Liana and Shan are not voting for Deshaun. You have Nasir who's saying he might vote for Deshaun, but he is respecting Erica's game. So you can see the numbers kind of going in Erica's favor. And then once you hear the questioning, you're like, there's no way that these people yeah. are voting for Xander or Deshaun based off the question that they ask, because the question that they ask shows how they feel about the person or how they feel that person thinks about exactly. them. So can I, what, what was your thoughts being as though you've seen other seasons of that live tribal? Of Good. going right into it, like, and you know, you being a proponent of like mental health, like, do you feel like, 
people should have had that time to process or like what what would and you being the eyewitness there like what 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 are your thoughts on that you, you, are you talking about the the final one like, like the, the reunion like, i think going straight into the reunion going straight into the oh, reunion yeah. and reading the votes yeah man let's, i thought i thought that was super strange like i said you like like you said erica xander and deshaun are still in the same clothes that they had on right they haven't had a chance to even understand like what just happened erica just became a millionaire Deshaun and Xander just lost, literally, actually, whatever, how much money they lost. So I'm like, okay, that's strange. But then when I see them wheel out the uh, the Survivor 41 sign, it looks like an old movie set where they're trying to switch it fast and stuff. I was like, my first thought is, this is cheap as hell. This is this is some this is some cheap stuff. You got to think about. It. I'm already upset about the hourglass <laughs> twist. I'm upset about rewards and the lack of and and how they looked and how they weren't extravagant. And now I'm like, they rolling this thing out here. We're like, what are we doing? They were correct in doing what they did, but I'm upset in that moment because I'm like, we're not gonna have no reunion. Like my, I, like I've been talking about my wife and kid coming to LA. That's a big moment for Survivor. Now, of course, they had COVID going on. They knew more about COVID than we did at the time, so mm -hmm. it come. It, you know, it turns out that their decision was correct, but it still sucked for us as as, as contestants because yeah. we felt like we missed out on on that opportunity to watch the season and then come back. And, and be able to kind of ask ask those questions that that, that, that you didn't know about uh, once you all get back in the same room. Wow. Absolutely. And, and I got to ask real quick, you gave the shakedown kind of as a juror on your your perspective on Erica's game, obviously Deshaun's game. How, how did you interpret Xander's game as, as a jury member? I, I was so as as we went through the game and me and Xander would have conversations. I would, I would have my conversation about saying, hey, man, I think you should do this. This is the time for this to get done. This is the big move. And just from my perspective, I felt like he had an opportunity to make big moves with the with the idol and with the extra vote that he had. Sure. I did not understand the Liana vote because in my head, I was like, okay, you had an extra vote. You could have voted out Ricard, still been 3-3. You got an idol and an extra vote. You could still vote out Liana next. You got the biggest threat out of the game. You still got Liana out and move forward. Thinking about it on that one. Think about the Evie vote. He has an idol. We were able to trick him into believing that we we're going to vote out Liana. So he didn't He didn't move on, on it that way. I just thought he had a lot of opportunities to make moves that he didn't make. Um, and, and, and that's kind of what it boiled down to. Like when, when, I'm, when I'm listing... Uh, Erica, like I said, she's also on the tribe that wins the entire first part of the game. She takes out Ricard. Hourglass Twist is, is not even in there. And then you have Deshaun, who I already listed what he did. When I start stacking up what Xander was able to do, in my opinion, it it, it, it just comes in third. Sure. sure. But I want to say this, he's your friend. He's a great guy. I still love him. <laughs> no, I, I, was, I, I wanted the honest feedback from someone who was there, you know. I, yeah, I, I wanted that honest that, that honest take yeah. for sure. And that's, and, that's, and, that's, and, that's just, and that's just my opinion because of, yeah. of how close I was to Xander in, in our game and how we tried to strategize. I don't know how everybody else felt about it, but whatever issues they had with him, that's not the issues that I had. Mine was yeah. strictly just based off the opportunities that he had in the game that I feel like he did not take advantage of. Definitely. So I feel like this is what I want to know. After listening to your honest assessment of the game and other people's gameplay, hearing if you had known this, absolutely you would not come back. And now you as an official vet of the game, now now we family. Okay, now, now Kiki, my, my cousin-in-law, uh, I want to know... Hey, Danny, it's Jeff. No, sir. <laughs> we're, we're playing for $7 million this season. No, sir. Not, not, I, don't, I don't believe you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Under no circumstance. Under no circumstances. <laughs> Danny, Danny, it's blood. No. You, you no. See, wait, you've seen the season Blood versus Water, right? Yeah. They saying Blood versus Water, you're going to be my cousin. You saying no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. That the only circumstance that I would go into that game like that, which I, I don't believe that that can ever happen, is if they put it in writing that that that, that, that ain't happening. Like, hey, man, listen, we're going to go into We're going to play the game this way. And what, what we're not going to do is lie to our contestants. All right. You can do whatever you want to in this game. This is your game. If I'm playing, it's your game. But. but so it's not a no. So it's not enough. So the door is open, bro. So the door is open. So and the, the door is open. The door 
is open. Okay, <laughs> ring the bell, Wendell. <laughs> No nah, man, no. Nah, I just, I like I said, I just, I just don't like putting myself in that situation. That like it did. You said mental health. It did not. It did yeah. not feel right for me in my mind. It was spinning for the rest of the game. The emotions that I went through just by having that happen is something that I will not put myself through again. It was not healthy for me. It ain't healthy mm -hmm. for me to still be even it linger, have it lingering in my head. But you know, it's it's a thing and and it's gonna stay there. But nah, if I don't if I don't get those reassurances that that ain't happening. And and it's still a great game. So they, like they don't need me. But I'm just saying, you know, since y'all asked the question, well, shout, you, shout out to Joe. You're a great, I, you're a great, you're a great castaway, my man. And you know <laughs> what they say about time? Nah, no, 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 no. You know what they say about principle? Oh, oh. <laughs> so here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Okay, I was on season forty. I I thought that I got a bad a bad um edit on season forty. Okay, okay. Your, your edit your edit was a. Uh... <laughs> Trash. Wait, how did so, you do on season forty? You know, better than you on, se on, <laughs> on, on season on season three or whatever season you're on. But um, season three. So here's here's the only thing I'm gonna say, man. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, after forty, I was like, man, I'm done. I, I want to walk away. I don't want to watch Survivor again. I don't want to interact with the community. I don't want to do any of that stuff. And we we a lot of us. And this wasn't because of my portrayal on season 40. It was because of a lot of black people's portrayal going back to season one. And it was because of the George Floyd movement that we got together and we, we made things change for the, you know, for things going forward. Right. And we went to Jeff and with a list of things that we wanted to see change. And they came back to us with a lot of changes and we saw it in your season. Mm -hmm. And so my season immediately one season before your season, I was, I felt screwed. I felt like this thing that I loved, this thing that I was on this high that I just won. That's all over my office. I thought my family loved ones letter is right here from my little sister. I thought that I was ready to let it go. I turned it into some, my experience into something positive that I contributed to for the future. And Later, I talked to a producer and I was like, man, yeah, I'll never go back out there. He was like, Wendell, they learned their lesson. Like, you were a good one. They they learned that they killed you out there. If you get called again, don't block your blessing. They, he said that to me. And that kind of changed my attitude because with your season, I saw them make these changes, right? And regarding this rule, this this Danny rule, this 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 reversal of time thing, bro, I think you let Probst know. Probst is a learner. Like, he wants to do right by people, ultimately. Yeah, he's always playing Survivor in the game, outside of the game. When he talks to you, when he calls you, every, he's always playing Survivor. But ultimately, he wants to do the right thing. So all I'm saying, and like I said, take it with a grain of salt, whatever I say, I think that he learned from you letting him know I think we might see it on season 42, but I think going forward, we, we won't see these, these kinds of actions. So, and if you go back out there, you're probably going to see perp. So, <laughs> you know, y'all need to work together out there. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I don't need to be talking this long, but I do want to say thank you for being a loyal listener and watcher of the Purple Purple Pants podcast and of Survivor News. We love you to death for that. We appreciate you. We're big Danny stands. Um, but we wanted to bring you on here so you could speak your piece, man. So like, if there's anything that you have on your chest, we know that our last interview with Shan, you know, might have rubbed you the wrong way. We want to make sure that you were able to speak and get out what you wanted to get out. So we just want to open the floor to you. Yeah, I, I'll say this. I, I think it was covered. I, like, I just want to reiterate that it's it, it, it can be her, her, her feelings or thoughts that the reason that me and Deshaun voted her out was because we didn't want to take orders from her or have her be the leader. And I and I'm and I and I got to say for me that that is totally untrue. Like I, I've explained my story of why she was voted out. I actually did not have the conversation that her and Liana had. Her, her closest ally who she's going to bat for is Liana. And she's the one who actually was having the conversation about voting her out, like I said. So you gotta just be accountable 
to you have to hold people accountable and then you also have to be accountable for what you did as well so when there's a thing of hey man deshaun had this issue with shan well i mean who didn't have an issue with shan right her and ricard was beefing the, the entire uh, beginning of the season right her and nasir i don't even know what relationship they have now but that they, they could go back and forth uh, when we got to ponderosa as well um we could just keep going to her and deshaun i uh, had a problem her and Heather had a problem because she pitched Heather's name as the as, as the dummy name to, to throw out, and Heather all of a sudden didn't like her. So at some point, you just got to say, hey, man, look, in the game, some of this stuff may have been my fault as well. And if we're able to sit back and say, all right, hey, man, I, I messed up, then you could just play the game and move on. But when you just continue to go on and, and not take that accountability, then that's fine. Deshaun has taken accountability for his actions. He is – Removed himself. That's why he doesn't do podcasts because he's trying to remove himself and work on himself. That is taking accountability. And I just want to hold people accountable, especially when you, you're throwing my name in there. Like I said, I, I just want to pitch this. We have a female football league that we're starting here in Texas where f- flag football will be a varsity sport, uplifting women. I was raised by a single mother. My grandmother took care of my grandpa, strong women around me. I have a daughter. I have a wife who is a a business owner of her own. She does her own thing, makes her own money. So, you know, if I allow somebody to say that's how I feel about women being leaders, then that's where it's just the issue. Other than that, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say anything, but I'm just like, you you just you just can't. I I appreciate you saying that. I think that I might speak on behalf of us and a lot of the viewers. I think that we were able to understand the, the kind of character that you have and the person that you are on your season. So uh, even though you feel the need to defend yourself and you absolutely have that right, like I think a lot of people understand like who you are at, and who you're, where your core val- values That's are. That's right. That's right. Gotcha. No, I, listen, I, I appreciate it. Like you said, like I said, I just got a lot going on. It only takes one. It only takes one thing to scroll across there for, mm. for all of a sudden to me be getting questioned about, how I acted on the game and what I really thought about a, a certain person and, and what led me to make the decisions that I made. So it, it, to me, I, I, I just had to do what I had to do. Shout out to Shan, who hopefully we'll have a conversation after this, another one. Shout out to Liana. Shout out to my brother, Deshaun, who is still great. And stay away from these podcasts, man. If that's, the, if that's what helps you with your mental health, stay away from it and, 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 and spend that money wisely. Mm. Right. And I, I hear that. But uh, truly, Danny, it's been such a pl- pleasure, such an yeah. honor to have you on the podcast. I was talking to Wendell a little earlier today and I was like, I'm nervous about having Danny on. Like, I don't know. But I, I have to say that, like, you have exceeded my expectations. You are real humble. I mean, I, I can't say you athletic because, you know, I be, <laughs> I be out here. But... <laughs> Y'all should do the Oklahoma drill. But truly, <laughs> let's do it, bro. <laughs> listen, listen, we, listen, we can do that. It, it ain't nothing. But honestly, though, it's it it is it truly humbling, and I, I'm so happy that we were able to have this conversation. Um, you said you're a man of your word. Okay, you don't like to be lied to. You said you'd be at a Bryson Wynn presents event. Okay, I like to hold you to that. But truly, though, seriously, thank you so much, uh, Wendell and Jack. Thank you again for coming back. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. Expect the unexpected. We got the baby boy Danny in the building. Let's go. We out. Thank you for coming on, Danny. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You're trying to unwind. You better get that box wine. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You better get your snacks on. You better get that box wine. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You better get your snacks and hurry right back.